has signaled 40 drivers to start their engines and begin the Heinz Southern 500 from Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Race number 21 out of 29 in the Winston Cup season for 1990. A Labor Day tradition that began in 1950 here at this facility on the very first super speedway that NASCAR ran on. Here to carry on a Labor Day weekend tradition that began 40 years ago, the Heinz Southern 500. Good at Nine more races to go. 423 markers separate the top five in points, and these guys are starting within the top ten. So, too, are the three drivers eligible for a $100,000 bonus from R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. Look at the Sears diehard starting lineup. Dale Earnhardt has won his fourth pole in five races. He'll start from the pole today in the GM Goodrin Chevrolet. And Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia, the 85 and 88 winner here, will start alongside. In the second row, it's Jeff Bodine from Chemung, New York, in the number 11 Budweiser Ford. Alongside will be defending Winston Cup champion Rusty Wallace in the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac number 27. The third row has Ricky Rudd from Chesapeake, Virginia in the Levi Garrett Chevrolet number 5 and Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Buick car number 26. Row number four, Harry Gant from Taylorsville, North Carolina in the Skull Bandit Oldsmobile number 33. And the number seven, Xerox Four, driven by Alan Kowicki from Greenfield, Wisconsin. Starting ninth, Derry Cope, Spanaway, Washington, Pure Later Chevrolet, car number 10. And the current points leader in Winston Cup competition from Batesville, Arkansas, the Folgers Coffee Ford, Mark Martin. Ernie Irvin will start in 11th position in the Kodak Film Chevrolet, car number four, and then Davey Allison in the Haviland Ford, car number 28. As you look at the rest of the starting lineup, 40 cars will begin this event here this afternoon. The field breakdown has 11 Pontiacs, 9 Chevys, 9 Fords, 7 Oldsmobiles, and 4 Buicks. The field now is on the racetrack, warming up, although they don't really need to get very warm because it is a very hot and sultry day in South Carolina as the field gets set to take the green flag for 500 miles of competition for a check, Bob. Indeed, the green flag is out. The Heinz Southern 500 underway, but Ernie Irvin is on pit road. And so is Davey Allison. Davey Allison in the pits, and they're going under the, well, no, it looks like the left front fender maybe was rubbing on his car, so two top cars in the pits as Earnhardt leads down the back stretch. Those two cars get out and should stay in the lead lap. leads the Southern 500 with Bill Elliott on his tail and the two cars that did come in for a pit stop Davey Allison and Ernie Irvin have gotten back out there and both are getting up to speed and apparently will not lose a lap Ernie Irvin got out ahead of Davey Allison so uh, he stands less of a chance to go a lap down the field moves high through the third and fourth corners with Earnhardt showing the way let's go to Jerry Punch for a report apparently Davey Allison had a problem with the steering wheel the steering wheel he catches put this in the steering column when he went into turn one in the pace lap, the steering wheel wasn't set right. So they came in to make sure the pin was in the steering wheel. Awfully critical here. You can't see the spin without a steering wheel. Alan Kowicki and Mark Martin are spinning in the first corner, and so is Derek Cope. So again, we see some car. Uh, that's uh, Greg Sachs also losing it, and the yellow flag comes out. Our Winston Cup point leader is moving. There goes the six car. The one in the very rear is Mark Martin. He is moving. The field racing back to the yellow flag here in front of us. Dale Earnhardt will take the yellow flag with Bill Elliott second, then Bodine and Rusty Wallace. And everybody involved in that spin over in turn number one, I believe, got away okay. I don't believe there was any contact with the wall, but there was sure a lot of spinning going on up there. And here's a look at it once again. Well, of course, it has already happened. You can see. I believe that's Kowicki. Kowicki down on the inside. Yes, it was. It was Mark Martin and Alan Kowicki. I looked up, and there comes Sachs. He sees the smoke, backs off the gas, and he spins. But again, I don't think the contact between the three cars, Sachs doesn't hit anything, and I don't think the contact between the first two cars, Kowicki and Martin, was that severe. So, listen. That from 
the Jason Binoculars in-car camera being carried by Kyle Petty, and that is the way the championships are won and lost. Exactly. <laughs> Other in-car cameras in 90-degree-plus temperatures to watch the Southern 500, which is about to go green once again. Doyle Ford waves the green, and we're under racing conditions once again. about this racetrack and how it can grab you and bite you and send you to the sidelines and already we have seen three cars spin but all of them are back in competition and they were very fortunate Bob to, to be back in competition because most of the time when you get involved as near up front as they were it can be very serious but they were very fortunate here today pretty much single file formation now there's the number two car Charlie Glassback and there are the three cars passing Charlie Glotz back in the number two that were involved in, or rather two of the three. Ernie Irvin, of course, uh, had a problem early. Davey Allison had a problem early, sending both of those to the pit road before the green flag. Greg Sachs coming now up on uh, Mark Martin and Alan Kowicki, the three drivers involved in the incident. I'll tell you, they got a tough road to hose from that far back, but they just need to be patient. They all have good race cars, so if they're patient, they can work their way back up through the field as Rusty Wallace trying to work his way up through the field. Battle for third position. Rusty Wallace takes third away from Jeff Bodine, but here comes <laughs> Jeff back on the inside to retake the position, and up front, we're going to notice a great battle for the lead between Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. Down the main straightaway, completing lap number nine, and Elliott was a half a fender ahead at that time, but Dale Earnhardt goes back in front into turn one. But here comes Bill back on the inside. This is classic Darlington racing. Those two guys this early coming through turns three and four side by side was most impressive. Now, is Earnhardt going to beat Bill in? Yes, but he's going to go up. But no. Bill backed off too much that time, Benny, to dive under him. He says it's too early in the race to be taking any unnecessary chances. Oh, look here now. Harry Kent on the apron of the racetrack. Like I said, you get on the apron, you can't spin. That's fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and on back. Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, then comes Harry Kent and, and Brent Bodine. Brent Bodine. Bodine. Let's see, can he gather it back in? A near loss. He does save it. He does not spin. No yellow. Brett Bodine continues but loses several positions. Well, I'll tell you, he did a great job of not spinning that car out. Can you imagine that? He was spun out. And yeah. He didn't go all the way around. Yeah. He was totally sideways and got back in the throttle and saved it. Here they come off the fourth corner once again with Earnhardt continuing to set the pace. Two guys have separated themselves a little bit from third place, Rusty Wallace. There comes Rusty off the second corner, and then the others, Ricky Rudd and Jeff Bodine, and Harry Gant and Morgan Shepard and Ken Schrader. I can't get over Brett Bodine. He was, his car was almost completely around, and he saved the car. And down on the flat part of the racetrack, where he, it's impossible almost, but he did. Great drive. That might be a case. We always say what a great job he did. He might have really done a good job. That's that time. Right. He wasn't just hanging on. Let's look at it once again. Bodine is the car on the low side of the track. He goes in under Harry Gant, and they touch just a little, and the back end goes around on the Quaker State Buick off Bodine, and he gets it almost straight before he gets down on the flat part. Look at Kyle Petty going on the flat part of the racetrack and goes by. Petty had to really take evasive action, and here is how it looked to Kyle. Now, what a great job. We talk about Brett Bodine. What a great job that Kyle Petty does. And Rusty Wallace is blowing down in turn one. A big puff of smoke from Rusty Wallace's car in the first corner. He was running third. This is going to have a serious setback on his chances of repeating for the Winston Cup. He came into this event fourth in the point standings, 270 to behind the leader, Mark Martin. But Rusty Wallace is off the pace with just 13 laps completed. Here comes the race to the caution flag once again that Earnhardt will win. There's oil on the racetrack, so they need to slow down as, as quickly as they can, and they did. So we can, at least for the moment, we believe, scratch off Rusty Wallace from those being eligible for the $100,000 bonus from 
R.J. Reynolds tobacco, of course, no driver was eligible for the Winston Million here this year, and Rusty Wallace takes it behind the wall. Into the garage area, so that does pretty well point up to the fact that it is terminal. Rusty Wallace will be back in a moment. Wallace, Jerry is with him. Yes, indeed, Bob. He will not get the $100,000 bonus, but I think more importantly, he wanted to win the Southern 500 in a bad way. You were coming in a, in a hurry. Well, it ran good. Uh, it was handled well, and I wanted to win this thing real, real bad, but a guy can't have everything he wants, I don't guess. But uh, the guys did a good job. The motor had a lot of horsepower, and uh, all I can say is that's racing, and uh, I'd like to thank Miller Genuine Draft and all the sponsors for sticking with us this year, and uh, uh, I'm going to try to win some more, but uh, this is a big disappointment today. A lot of confidence this morning in the garage area. Barry and Maycar and all the crew felt that you had the car that was going to take Earnhardt and uh, Elliott to pass. I think we did. I was. Uh, I think we really had something for him. Like I say, the chassis was right. Uh, it just lost the motor. Disappointment here for Rusty Wallace, and there will be another day. He's out of it here in the Southern 500. Well, Rusty can't feel too bad because he will hold on to fourth place in points, although he finishes 40th. Here is Mark Martin, who is making a pit stop, and Davey Allison. Mark comes down to his assigned pit down near turn number one. Of course, they didn't have as much to lose. They were near back at the back of the pack, Bob. We see them putting tires on Davey Allison's car on the right side. Now they're jacking up Mark Martin's car, and they will go four tires on him. Welcome back to the other Southern 500, where the green flag comes out and racing resumes after our second caution period of the day. You watch that line come down to the start finish line and take the green flag. You wonder why they don't go two or three abreast. That is against the rule. You cannot pass a car on the inside before you get to the start finish line. Morgan Shepard and Ken Schrader involved in a battle for position here. That's for six spot. Shepard has it. The Motorcraft Ford, Schrader right behind Kyle Petty on Ken Schrader's tail. Okay, Schrader has made a good move, Bob, up through the field. He started 21st in this field and after 20 laps up there in the seventh position. From the Jason Binoculars in-car camera, riding with Kyle Petty right behind Ken Schrader as they go down the back stretch. I'm impressed. These cars are running faster than ever. They look like they're two, three miles an hour faster than they've ever been in Darwin. Could be the radial tires, Benny. Of course, they ran the radials here in the spring with great success. Brought them back here in the heat of the Labor Day weekend. But that could help them to run back. Again, Schrader's trying to pull up on the back bumper of Morgan Shepard. They're putting a little distance on Kyle, looks like, Bob. Looks like they're pulling away from him just a little bit. He's go to the Hines in car, carried by Jimmy Spencer. He doesn't have a whole lot of traffic in front of him to go with. Just ahead of us on Charlie Glott's back in the number two car. And Harry Gann is making a bid on Jeff Bodine. This is for fourth. Petty has caught that group of cars. Bodine might be holding them up a little bit. It looks that way. Harry Kent tried to get inside Jeff Bodine coming off second corner. was not able to do it, but you're right. They're all joined up on the back of Harry Kent. Once again from Kyle's in-car camera. Oh, Morgan Shepard and Ken Schrader touch, and Schrader goes up into the wall, scraping it. He's in the wall pretty hard. Yeah, he's closed very definitely. Dale Jarrett goes by and down on the inside, and Rick Wilson, Dick Triple, Schrader definitely in trouble. Now he has moved down out of the groove. He'll be heading to the pit. Schrader ran so well here in the spring and was running well here in the fall, and now he's headed for the pits, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, tries to go by Morgan Shepard on the outside following Harry Gant into that turn. Shepard might not know that he's out there. His car slides up just a little bit, slips the left front of Schrader's car, and gets Schrader into the wall. Kyle Petty goes by on the inside. And from another angle, we'll see it again. 
Same thing. Morgan thought about getting by Harry Gant, couldn't make it. He had no idea that Schrader was up there. He goes up the hill, Schrader straight in the wall, and that's heavy contact. Jerry Punch is there in the Ken Schrader pit. And the crew for vague damage on the car. Apparently, sheet metal damage on the right front. They have changed the right side tires will come around to the left side. They are looking at the left side. Now, Schrader gets the signal to go ahead and move away. He's losing valuable time here to the green flag. A tough break. They were trying to pull some sheet metal away from the right front and also a little bit in the left rear, but he is down and away, but it's lost a lot of ground. Well, he lost one lap, Jerry, for sure, and if he doesn't get his speed up, he could go two laps down as the leaders are coming off of turn four and down the front straightaway. Schrader ran 10th here in the Trans-South 500. Meanwhile, back up front, it's still Dale Earnhardt leading Bill Elliott. Got to give a call for Bill Elliott. This is one of the better runs he's had this last two or three months. He did run very well in Michigan in June. Blew up with about 15 laps to go or something, but he's running extremely strong so far. And I think he's uh, being very patient now, Benny. The Coors Ford is running and handling well for him. He made an attempt or so to pass Earnhardt. Wasn't going to be easy, so he just uh, stepped back and and just decide to fall. And here's Ken Schrader going behind the wall with the Kodiak Chevrolet. Boy, that puts two of the top contenders in this race behind the wall. Rusty Wallace is already out with a blown engine, and now Ken Schrader goes behind the wall while the crew tries to find out if they can fix that car. And it is a steering problem on the 25 car, so they may be able to get it fixed. Well, he's been all the steering in the front of the car when he made contact with the ball. Drum. All this stuff is going to have to be replaced. Earnhardt, the defending champion of the race. Here is Mark Martin weaving his way through traffic, going to the inside of Greg Sachs. That's the battle for 24th and 25th position. Davey Allison looks inside of Greg Sachs. But Davey couldn't make the pass. Now he falls back, and they're going to go single file to turns one and two. That's Hutch Tripton right behind Davey. running 24th after a skirmish up in turn number one early. Davey Allison goes inside of Craig Sachs and will try to pick up the 25th position, and he does. Davey Allison moves to 25th. Let's go to Jerry, who's in the Ken Schrader garage area. Actually, he's behind the wall, Bob. They are working the crew now. Richard Broom will change the A-frame and the lower control arm on the right front of the car. Schrader is still sitting in the car hooked up. Kenny, what happened out there? Bob Morgan just ain't looking where he's going. He's worried about somebody passing him. And as he's, you know, I got up alongside, not up the side, got the front end up there, and he just went up to the wall. Well, Trader sitting in the car, losing valuable time. They will get the car repaired, but he will lose a lot of time and a lot of points here for the Winston Cup point race. Ken Trader, ninth in the Winston Cup point standings. And here is a replay from Kyle Petty's Jason Binoculars in car camera. Happened right in front of him. Well, you can see Schrader trying to move up on the outside off Morgan Shepard. That really is not the place to pass on this racetrack on the outside going into turn one. But he saw the opening up there, thought he could make it, but didn't work. Dale Earnhardt continues to lead the Southern 500 with Bill Elliott running in second spot. We'll be back with more of our live coverage right after these messages. Stay with us. 35 laps completed out of 367 that make up the Southern 500. And Dale Earnhardt, who has won the last five of nine races here at Darlington, has the lead this afternoon, followed closely by Bill Elliott. As now Earnhardt moves up on the slower traffic and begins to pass those cars. That's the number 82 machine driven by Mark Stahl. He's closing in on H.P. Bailey. He'll be the next to go a lap down. HB in the red and white car. Now, there's Ricky Rudd and Jeff Bodine, and here comes Harry Gant and Kyle Petty, and those two have been going at it for the last few laps, and here is Kyle moving to the inside as we take a look from his in-car camera, and he makes a nice, clean pass on Harry Gant. Boy, that looks so easy. Yeah, he just got down on the inside, stepped on the gas of that seat Pontiac, and it moved away. And that moves him up to fifth position. Still no sponsorship announcement on that number 42 car for 1991. Pete will not be back as the primary sponsor. Gary Nelson says that uh, they're not quite ready to 
make the announcement. But they don't seem to be too worried. No, he said, but if you get thirsty the next few days, I'd like for you to drink some Mellow Yellow. So <laughs> maybe the natural driver had turned a few laps in the car. He will be standing by in the Kyle Petty Pit today in case he's needed as a relief driver. Talk to Jimmy this morning as we were leaving the hotel, and he is ready to step into that car any time that Kyle feels that he can't continue. There's Harry Gant, who was passed by him, but is holding right with him. And there is Ricky Rudd and Jeff Bodine as they're right ahead of Kyle and Harry. They're running third and fourth. Rudd running third. Jeff Bodine fourth. Kyle Petty now fifth. Jeff Bodine is close. I mean, yes, he's closing in on Ricky Rudd. Rudd passed. Look, Jeff Bodine takes a look on the inside, not able to make the pass, but Rick Rudd passed him earlier in the race. And now... Either Jeff is flying or Ricky's backing up. Jeff was the fastest car on the racetrack during the final practice yesterday afternoon. That always means something. And here he comes on the inside of Rudd up at three and four. He got him. Yes, he does. Ricky wisely backed off the throttle a little bit. Moves Jeff Bodine up to third and drops Ricky back to fourth. And not too far behind there in fifth is Kyle. Oh, it's Finn right on the front straightaway. H.P. Bailey. H.P. Bailey slams the inside wall right here on the straightaway. Quite a bit of damage to H.P. car on the front end. He is in his fourth decade of racing here at Darlington, but it's come to a rather disastrous end here this afternoon. He's trying to get the car refired. And I he does. We'll, we'll see some pit stops this time, fellas. Now, there's no doubt about it because we've been 41 laps. H.P. Bailey, the number 36 machine, able to drive it away. So lap number 41 brings us our third caution of the day. And when the pace car comes out and bunches up the field and the green flag waves at the end of pit road, it'll be open. And we will see some pit stops. And here at Darlington, there are pits on the front and the back. Here's the tail end of the crash. You can see H.P. sliding across the start-finish line. And bam, the front end of his Pontiac into the wall. He'd already hit the outside retaining wall. Most of the damage was done against the outside retaining wall. Here comes Dale Earnhardt in for a pit stop, and Jerry Punch is in his pit. Everyone will take advantage of a pit stop who should. Really, here's Earnhardt making his way down pit road. Elliot, Bodine, Good. Dale Earnhardt, Goodrich crew, going to work on the right side of this Chevrolet. It will change all four tires. Remember the radial tires here, which don't really wear that bad. Pick it up in a hurry. Bill Elliott's crew now, turns his car on the bottom of his screen. Right side of the other car. That's Mike Beam with the Coors crew. Already putting left side tires on the Goodrich Chevrolet for Dale Earnhardt. Left side tires, they have trouble now with the jack on the Earnhardt car. They cannot get the car off the ground. They keep pumping. Elliott is out of the way, and they are just now getting the left rear tire on the Earnhardt car. He is down and out. Bodine is away. Here goes Harry Gant, Kyle Petty. They all move back to turn one. Several getting out ahead of Dale Earnhardt. He'll fall in behind Ricky Rudd there and ahead of Harry Gant and Morgan Shepard. Boy, that's a tough break. I tell you, pit stops are getting more and more important because the competition is so close in Winston Cup racing. Track position is then missing a moment ago. Very, very important. And look at the activity on the back pit. Of course, it starts a lot later than it does here on the front pit. There's Terry Labonte getting service on his car. Butch Miller and the Banquet uh, Foods Planters Peanut Car getting service on his machine. Everybody putting on four tires. There comes the car out of there. That was Michael Walker came out of the pack. And here's Dave Marcus, who had taken the lead in the Big Apple Market Chevrolet. So Dave picked up five bonus points as a result of being in the lead. So now he comes into the pit. Dave Marcus in the number 71 car. He's still uh, nursing the broken leg that he suffered in the uh, practice crash prior to the Pepsi 400. Under caution once again at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. And there was a million dollars at stake for Darrell Waltrip, who had already won Daytona and Charlotte. He began from ninth starting position and drove a conservative race early. Meanwhile, the two who were battling for the Winston Cup were also battling for the race lead. It took Dale Earnhardt 54 laps to move from his 10th starting position to take the lead from Wallace. Waltrip, despite his conservative attitude, pumped the wall and finished 22nd. Wallace and Earnhardt, meanwhile, continued their fight for the lead. With just 62 laps to go, Earnhardt takes the lead for the final time and goes on to take his third victory of the 1989 season.
and a win was especially important for Earnhardt, whose father, Ralph, had been inducted into the Hall of Fame earlier in the weekend. That was a year ago, and here comes the field down to retake the green flag, and on lap number 46, we're back to racing conditions with Jeff Bodine at the front of the field and Bill Elliott running second, and Dale Earnhardt in the black number three looking for a way through the field. He moves to the inside of Ricky Rudd and picks up a position, and now looks to Mark Martin. Watch him go by these cars, pulls alongside Mark Martin, and takes that spot away. said on his radio, we understand that uh, that'll just give him a little extra in seat. <laughs> Probably had to It's Bodine, Elliott, and Kyle Petty up front, and then Earnhardt, and then Rudd, and then Martin, and then Rudd. Boy, Bill Elliott all over the Budweiser Ford of Jeff Bodine as they head down the back stretch. Kyle Petty's car once again from the Jason Binoculars in-car camera. Kyle looking to the inside of Elliott. Will not make a bid for second. Here comes Dale Earnhardt closing in on everybody. Hasn't taken Earnhardt long to move up on the Louis lead group. See what feedback of these four cars and moves on. Really could be bad news for the rest of the day the competition. Well, 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 it. Moving to the inside of Jeff Bodine and will try to take the lead away from Jeff. Two fours going at it. They touch, but Bill Elliott comes away with the lead. And here comes Kyle Petty down to the inside of Jeff Bodine. Did not make it. Had to back off, let Bodine have the preferred line. Turn three, just don't go in there to a breast. Here comes Dale Earnhardt now going for third position as he passes Kyle. Two wheels on the apron as he went by. <laughs> against the wall in the first and second turns. Well, that's that's that, the drive that, that concerns me, though. I, I think that the car going that high this early after stop, I don't think he likes the car the way it is right now. Side cam on Kyle Petty's car. Look how close they've come to that wall. pass on Morgan Shepard. If he does that, Lake Speed went into the pits and then scheduled it picks off on the back stretch in the Crestone Oakmobile. Ernie Irvin makes that pass on Morgan Shepard for you. Irvin with a problem at the very beginning of the race before the green flag came out. He was headed for pit road. There's Dick Trickle. Great run going for Dick today. This is Kel Yarber and Carl's hometown. Kind of like last week was Ernie Irvin's car owner's hometown. And that's the scene that Dick Trickle sees when he looks up in the mirror. Look at Mark Martin. Martin. He's dropped down on the inside of the track, and Ernie Irvin and others pass him. Mark Martin's got a problem. It appeared there for a second. Well, right now, he doesn't want to race with anyone. Yep, I think that's it. So are you telling me that perhaps Mark Martin has a million dollars in mind in the championship more than taking chances and winning races right now? I think he's thinking about a trophy more than a million dollars. You think yeah. so? Yes. This is the Phillips 66 bumper can. Well, there is a lot of prestige that goes with winning the Winston Cup. Certainly Mark Martin would love to win it. But you don't want to take chances, fellas, as it's early in this race. You've got to have a lot of patience here, and I'm sure that Mark Martin has drilled that into his own head. So has Jack Ralph drilled it into his head. You've got to have patience. Closing in on Dick Trickle is Ernie Irvin. Good shot of that car. Now he'll go to the inside in the second corner. Ernie Irvin will pick up another position as he passes Dick Trickle on the backstretch. 
and Earnhardt just hasn't driven away from Kyle Petty. Uh, I don't think that Earnhardt's car is exactly the way he wants it now. I said that a moment ago, and those two Fords are pulling a little bit further away than Earnhardt would want them to. Again, you can see how high on the track Earnhardt is there in the first and second corners. So Harry Gant's car coming into the picture back there, the Green Dostmobile. This is one against better racetrack. There comes Harry, the green car, behind, behind the, the blue car is Kyle Pay, the black Dale Earnhardt. Gant, the winner, three times here on this racetrack, the Southern 584, Trans South 583 and 89, as you take a look at the field after 50 laps. Field passing Mark Stahl at number 82. Let's go to Jerry Punch with an update on Dale Earnhardt. Well, apparently, Benny, you're exactly right. Earnhardt's car is pushing pretty badly. He is having trouble turning the car in the corner, but Schilder says they didn't want to loosen the car up too much early on because a loose race car can be a severe liability here. If the car was pushing like he took the green flag, but it went away in a hurry, so maybe with another 15 or 18 laps of green flag racing, it'll loosen itself up and the push will go away. Let's check up in the Mark Martin pit where John Turner is standing by. Well, Jerry, we saw Mark move over and let some cars go by him while ago on that last pit stop to get back up in the front of the pack. Martin's team elected to take on almost two tires, and so the car is just a little bit loose. And you see 94 Sterling Marlin just passing by and Morgan Shepard. So it's a problem right now that they're going to have to ride out. Uh, they're just a little bit loose on the Mark Martin car. And also Jeff O'Dime, when Bill Elliott made the pass, Bill Elliott came up behind him, and when he did it, upset the air on the spoiler, and when the car gets behind Bodine, they've noticed that uh, it gets real loose in the corner. So that's a problem they may have to correct on the next pit stop. Mark Martin has fallen all the way back to 11th position. There's Morgan Shepard just ahead of him in 10th. The lead continues to be held by Bill Elliott, who leads Jeff Bodine in the High Southern 500. We're live from Darlington Raceway. We'll be right back. Back at Darlington International Raceway, Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch as Morgan Shepard is on the move. He has now moved up to the eighth position, and Ricky Rudd is the driver he just passed, and he's telling his crew on the radio that he's not comfortable with the right rear. He knows it's not flat. He's just not comfortable with it. You know, Morgan Shepard, remember in the spring how strong that motocraft board was? And it hasn't lost a great deal since then. The car extremely good this afternoon and here comes Mark Martin back. You know Ned that the things just keep going. The, the cars are they're fast, they're slow. The racetrack changes, doesn't it? It does change dramatically, but and these guys are having are seeing this. Back up front, meanwhile, it is still Bill Elliott and then Jeff Bodine. And there's Earnhardt. It looks like the racetrack's coming back to Dale Earnhardt because if you, when we went to commercial, he was 10, 15 car lengths back. He's just one car length behind Jeff Bodine now. And they were talking about his car pushing a little bit. Well, after he runs a while, gets the tires heated up, sometimes that'll, uh, the car, a tight car, that'll work to his advantage, and apparently the track is coming to him. Now, folks, when you hear these guys talking about this racetrack, you're hearing it from experts because these guys have competed on this racetrack and they have won on it. Ned Jarrett was the winner of the, the uh, Southern 500 back in 1965. Benny Parsons' best finish of the Southern 500 was fourth back in 1980, but Benny won the Trans-South 500 on this speedway in 1978. Bill Elliott continues to hold off the others. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with Mike Bean. Remember early in the year when Kyle Petty was so dominant at Rockingham, the reason being that Gary Nelson said they went to a short track in Martinsville and tested and found out something about the radial tire. Mike, you guys tested earlier in the week at Richmond and said you learned a whole lot that helped you here today. Well, we just tried different things on, a, on our other car, and, you know, we thought maybe it would help us here. And we here the other day, and Bill said, you know, maybe we ought to just try our, our Richmond setup because it went way off the wall up there, and it seemed to help the car. 
because, you know, we've been hurting all the, these radios anyway, and so uh, I just threw some stuff under it, you know, and it ran well. We come off the truck, did all the boys in the shop, they got this car ready wise in Richmond, and uh, we learned a whole lot, and hopefully we can win a race for our fans, you know, we appreciate the standing behind us, I know we haven't won a race, but we're trying hard anyway. Indeed they are, Gus. Can you believe it? A short track setup working here on Radio Fire at Darlington. Yeah, I think that's possible, Jerry, because this track has a lot of short track characteristics. As Bibby mentioned at the top of the show, turns one and two are very short and tight there at the pointed end of an egg. When you look at this track from an aerial view, it does, uh, it is egg-shaped. And uh, getting traction through the corners here, you're in the corners a lot, and so you need a short track type of a setup. So I can believe that would work. Well, Elliott continues to show the way over Bodine and Earnhardt, but look at Ernie Irvin come up through the traffic. He passes uh, Harry Gant and moves into fifth. Someone told me just a moment ago that Ernie Irvin was about three tenths quicker than Bill Elliott, so he could be the fastest car on the racetrack. Here is the serial on Ernie Irvin. Look, he started in 11th position, was all the way back to 26th because of his early problem by the 15th lap, but he moved up steadily the 19th to 9th and now is in 5th position at the end of 67 laps. And Ernie looked good in the Bush Grand National race yesterday before problems. He attacks this racetrack. There's Harry Gant going extremely high. Remember, was it last year that Harry Gant hit the wall three or four times down in turn one? But yeah. he's not afraid of it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, he let the drip up there. The most recent winner in Winston Cup competition, Ernie Irvin, pursuing Bill Elliott. Sixth, and we go to John Kernan for a report. Well, you're talking about Harry getting close to that wall. This morning they were shaving on the right side of the car inside the front fender. And the reason they were doing that is Andy Petrie said they knew Harry was going to hit the wall about six or seven times. And they wanted to make sure he had plenty of clearance from the sheet metal to the tires. So they thinned it out probably, I don't know, maybe just a couple of millimeters, but enough that they hoped would make the difference. I don't know whether that's an expression of confidence <laughs> in your driver or not. <laughs> Harry is tough on this racetrack. He is especially uh, tough on the uh, Bush Grand National Circuit here, but he is also tough in Winston Cup competition. So 70 laps have gone by. Just a little less than 300 to go in the Southern 500. We'll be with the Bush Grand National Race. Just in lugging those cans. They staggered around and finally got the gas can up on the, in the quarter pound. Now the leader, Bill Elliott, begins to lap some of the slower traffic, and that's Chad Little in number 19 that goes to lap down. Here comes Jeff Bodine right behind and Dale Earnhardt. Slow traffic at this racetrack can be a killer. If you catch him at the wrong spot, you can lose two seconds a lap. Earnhardt looks like he wants to look inside, but no, he just can't get off four well enough right now to make that move. Oh, but Bodine's oh, yeah. looking on the inside of Bill. Nope, not this time. Just a look. Just let him know he was back there. He wanted to disappear in that mirror for just a moment. There goes Earnhardt up against the wall again. Earnhardt's running awful low in three and four. Both those two cars in front of him run very high. Dale still trying to get that groove worked out on the bottom three and four. The top ten in points coming into this event and where they're... Morgan Shepard looks like... Ken Schrader had just rejoined the race after spending several laps in the pit trying to correct the steering. And you'll recall that it was uh, with Morgan Shepard that he had a little incident earlier in the race. Yeah, that's what sent him into the garage area for those repairs. Looks like Shepard is moving away now. Trader's car, quite a bit of damage to it down on the inside. Uh -oh. the you know, I thought Morgan was going to come down and uh, say something to Kenny, but he didn't. Both cars are moving. I don't think he can fix that car. That car is heavily damaged. Certainly they can't get it to where it would run competitively again. Of course, he's already a lot of left down. You can see a lot of smoke coming from Motorcraft Ford or Morgan Shepard. Uh, it's perhaps tires, fenders rubbing against tires. 
and the damage is more, I believe, on the right, no, the left front there. That's where that smoke is coming from. Meanwhile, here come the leaders. It's Elliott and Bodine and Earnhardt and Kyle Petty and all the others coming down pit road. Let's go to Jerry. Bill Elliott brings his course forward to a halt. Mike Bean, Chuck Hill, Ernie, and Dan Elliott, the rest of the course crew are going to work on the car. They will change all four tires. They were concerned about how strong Guess what I was running earlier. They want to make sure they get the stagger exactly right. Let's check in this benign pit with John Curtis. The crew goes to work right side already on. Left side lugs off tires. The jack going under tires coming up going on. They've got the last pit stop in under 21 seconds. And it looks like they've got another one going down. Jeff Lodine is down and away. Ricky Rudd is in. And this is a big break for the Levi Garrett Chevrolet. Rudd thought that he either had loose lugs nuts or an equalized right front tire and a vibration. And they told him to hang on now. Problem, the lug nut drops off and they get it on quickly. And the big Rudd stays on the lead lap, but he is back in the pack. Still on the lead lap. Rudd and the others going back out onto the racetrack after service, but Morgan Shepard remains on pit road as the Bud Moore crew tries to get the sheet metal pulled away from the left side tires. Yep. Hoping to get a lap back. Field accelerates and takes the green again. Thundering herd moves into turn number one. Tiptoeing gingerly through that turn as they deal with the lap traffic. They have to go two abreast. Let's take a look at a big A auto parts pit stop performance on four drivers. Jeff Bodine with a really good 34.2 total after a 12.9 for the driver and a 21.3 for the crew. The quickest of the four. Now, the uh, Dale Earnhardt crew normally performs the fastest service, but we find him at the bottom of those four cars listed there. And normally, Earnhardt is the fastest in and out of the pits, but I don't know whether his, track, his pit position here today that they chose had probably had something to do with that. Well, normally he's the leader. This time he wasn't the leader, so that makes a difference. And too. Earnhardt has chosen as his pit position the middle space, right in the middle of pit road, whereas most of the time he chooses the pit closest to turn number one. Elliott trying to take the lead away from Jeff Bodine. Good battle for the lead here. Boy, there's a long jam of cars coming off a two over there. Somebody got a little sideways, and they really got jammed up back behind these leaders, but everybody got through it okay. And Earnhardt continues to move in on Bill Elliott. There are your top five cars. Here is the log jam that you <laughs> talked about. Included in this group, Lake Speed, Chad Little pulls to the inside of the racetrack and allows the faster cars to pass by this, and rather uh, Dale Jarrett right there. And Harry Gant is back there, too. And the reason he's back there, he overshot his pits coming in during that caution, had to go back out and come back in the next time around. So that put him at the rear of the pack. He was running six when he came in and went out running about, uh, I don't know, somewhere back 20 or something the back. Harry moving to the inside of Dale Jarrett. They rub coming off the fourth corner. Harry has position now going in turn one. Dale will back off, let him go down in the corner. I hope he's smart enough to do that, and he was. I look at Terry Labonte moving on the inside of Hutch Strickland, car number 12. Hutch goes a little wide there. Here's Lake Speed. The first time Antifreeze has moved 1988 winner of the uh, Trans South 500 Lake Speed in that yellow number 83. Here comes the yellow 75 of Rick Wilson. And there's Brent Bodine moving the Quaker State Buick around Hutt Strickland. And Derek Cope makes it three wide here on the main straightaway. <laughs> well, he wasn't that no, he didn't do that. <laughs> Here's third, fourth, and fifth. Dale Earnhardt in third, Kyle Petty in fourth, and Rick, I mean Ernie Irvin in fifth place. And here is Rudd moving to the inside and picking up the position. Rob Moroso having a good run. He started 22nd and is now in the top 10. And we talk about young drivers. Rob Moroso, just 21 years old. Long future ahead of him in Winston Cup stock car races. Take a look at those who have dropped out of competition. Remember that Rusty Wallace was the very first driver to fall out of the race. 
with an engine problem. However, because he had enough of a lead over Elliott in the points, Rusty will maintain third in the battle for the Winston Cup. Rather, fourth in the battle for the Winston Cup. Here's Kyle Petty making a move on Dale Earnhardt, headed for turn number one. They go in side by side, and Kyle gets the advantage through the corner. Earnhardt battles back on the outside, up high on the wall, and wiggles a little bit coming off the course. Let's see what happens as they go down the back stretch. It's Earnhardt flipping ahead just a little bit. He had the momentum coming off the turn. Let's see if he slides up. No, Kyle the person that slides up going into that turn, so he was not able to make a pass. Now we watch Ernie Urban. There's Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> he picks up the spot, passing Kyle. And Sterling Marlins joins the action. He says, hey, I want to play with you guys. Up front, where the, all the action is. Three, four, five, and six right here. Well, Sterling Marlin started in 23rd position here today, which was the last position that you could be in to pit on the front stretch. And he qualified on Thursday, was back in the pack, didn't have a very good qualifying run. They took the backup car out of their truck, hoping it would run faster. They had a brand new car here for this race, took the backup car out and re-qualified just so they'd have an opportunity to get to pit on the front stretch. And sure enough, it worked for them. They qualified 23rd, which was the last spot to pit on the front. And during the qualifying and practice sessions here, we had uh, some cars in the wall. Hutt Strickland visited uh, the wall. So did Harry Gant, Bobby Hillen, and perhaps the most serious was Greg Sachs, who broke his right foot. But then later went out and qualified for the pole for the Grand National Race. Car spinning in turn number one. Looks like Jimmy Mean and Chad Little down on the inside has spun. There is Chad Little. Jimmy Mean scrapes along the wall, rides it through the second turn and down the back stretch. The Alka Felser Pontiac, tough break for Jimmy. He's had some real tough breaks here in recent races. But he's trying to get it on up the straightaway there as far as he can out of harm's way. And it looks like he's going to do that now. He's going to try to pull it down to the inside of the track, get it back to the pits. Of course, he's one of those drivers pitting on the back stretch. Apparently, uh, rather Richard Petty, number 43, may have been dropping some fluid on the racetrack that resulted in this incident. It looked like a little smoke coming from the back of the car as he coasted around, Bob, and I believe he is coasting. So he's going into the back pit for Richard Petty and the STP Pontiac. Well, pit lane. And here is the leader of the race, or uh, Bill Elliott coming in, and Jerry Punch will report. Although Bill Elliott only pitted some 14 laps ago on lap 80, he is going to come in and change four tires because he has a vibration in the car. They were concerned about possibly an equalized tire. They don't really cut these tires that often, so you don't worry about a tire going down, but a vibration is something you don't want to take a chance on your car with. And now Dan Elliott's crew changing the left side tire. They've already replaced the right side. Put the lug ducks back in place, stop it off in fuel, and we'll drop the jack, and Bill Elliott is away. Richard, you've been sort of hustling to try to get the car to handle. What seems to be the problem now? Well, right now with the track, the condition it is, we're a little too tight off of four and just a little loose off of two over here. So we're going to adjust the car, try to help them off four. Looks like where we're getting beat worse right now. Is four the critical spot, so you'll let him go ahead and continue to be loose off two? Yeah, if we can, if we can get him through uh, four over here, he says he hadn't even used the throttle at all or yet through four, so that's where we got to work on it right now. Earnhardt's got a problem trying to keep the car down away from the wall in turn four. And Jerry, that is a normal problem here on this racetrack. You can't set a car up where it'll go through both turns uh, good all the way around. That's right. You guys alluded to that at the, at the beginning of the race, but it is almost impossible to set a car up to run good at, at both ends. If you get through four, you're going to be too loose in one and two, and that's why they're going up to the top of the racetrack to try to to catch the back end to make sure they don't spin out. The crowd is on their feet, Bob. Jump up, let's go. It is a sun-drenched crowd that cheers the green flag as it waves over Darlington on lap 101, and we're back to action. Make that 102. Inside of Kyle Petty's Jason Binocco's car as he goes by Rick Mass. Napa Valvoline Pontiac. Rick was running off the good earlier. He got a lap down for some reason. I think he made an unscheduled pit stop. It's Bodine, Earnhardt, and Irvin. And then a little bit of racetrack back to fourth place, Kyle Petty. Ernie Irvin right on the back bumper of 
Dale Earnhardt, yeah, he all but touched him going into turn one. Jimmy Spencer is driving the Heinz Pontiac, and we pick up his progress now and from this in-car camera. He's running in 27th position. Coming up on Mark, uh, Dave Marcus. Now, look at this. Irvin looking for second position. Goes to the inside of Dale Earnhardt. Ooh, he's Don't going up, and there. Earnhardt's coming down. That's a bad combination. Yep. Boy, if they touch there, that could be... Uh, Bad news for both of them. And meanwhile, here comes Kyle Petty to close in on, on Ernie. Let's go to Jerry, who has a comment on Ernie's run. No surprise at all that Ernie Urban is running as well as he is here. This is the same car that he won with last week at Bristol, Tennessee. In fact, it's the exact same engine. Rod Pitt on the engine man said, hey, we're going we're gonna to run this, this horse into the ground. It's our best race car. Took the engine back, went through the valves, put it in the car. They were being kidded in the garage all week long as they kept the car covered with a canvas all afternoon to work on the car. And I asked Larry McClure, the car owner, I said, why are you keeping the car covered? He said, hey, we want this car to think it's still nighttime and it's still Bristol, Tennessee. Spin and turn two, car sliding to the inside. That's Jimmy Spencer. He bumps the wall. We see it from his in-car camera. He gets the car headed the right direction. I'm not sure this is going to bring out a caution. It will not. Jimmy gets the car rolling down the back stretch, and the field continues at speed. And we can see he's got some damage to the right front where it's rubbing the tire, so he will have to go in the pit and no caution flag to be able to fix it. He'd like to win this race for his sponsor, who also is a sponsor of this event, Heinz. Come on, he's going to stay on the racetrack. He's moving the back up to speed. Well, right. he's hitting on the back stretch, fellas, and he's got to go down. He was all the way to pass the entrance of the pit, so he has to guard stop there. Meanwhile, back out on the racetrack, it's Harry Gant, Rick Wilson, Dale Jarrett and Bobby Hillen that run nose to tail. Yeah, they're really mixing it up. Just the last lap around, Harry Gant got around to Rick Wilson. Now Dale Jarrett trying to stick his nose to, to the nose of the Citgo Ford up under there, but couldn't quite do it that time. And then we see Greg Sachs back there in the Tide Chevrolet and Derek Coke, Daytona 500 winner. Winner is over also. Bill Elliott as well back there. But yep. Remember, he made a pit stop, had to go completely to the rear of the field, trying to work his way back there. Let's take a look at what happened to Jimmy Spencer. Okay, he just gets very high, loses control of the car. You see him looking down at the infield, and then hits the inside remaining wall. Wasn't a real hard bump for the wall, but it was enough to push that sheet metal back onto the tire, and that's what put Jimmy Spencer in the pit. And here is... Jeff Bodine, followed by Dale Earnhardt and Ernie Irvin, moving off the fourth corner now into turn one. And that yellow car back behind Kyle Petty is Lake Speed. But, a name we haven't heard from today. But he is shown as a lap down. Oh, he is a lap down. Well, that's too bad for Lake. Yes, he made an unscheduled pit stop. I think I referenced that earlier in the race. It was a green flag pit stop. He was pitting on the back stretch. And unfortunately, he is a lap down. 21 and 75 running side by side. Wilson on the yellow car and Dale Jarrett on the inside in the white car. That's for the 7-16th position. And Bobby Hillen falls in behind Rick Wilson. And here comes Bill Elliott, Derry Cope, and Greg Sachs. Elliott and Cope were able to pass Greg Sachs going down the back straightaway and in turn three. They say that Darrell Walker is going to drive in Darlington in its Richmond next week the Tide Chevrolet. That's what he tells us. Talk to him this week. He says, I'm ready. He also announced here earlier in the weekend, look at Hill and go to the inside of uh, Rick Wilson. Ooh. Wilson got out of the throttle, and that allowed Bill Elliott to move to the inside and take up another spot. Darrell Waltrip uh, announcing that he has purchased his portion of the Rick Henry team for 1991. And sponsorship will be announced in a few weeks. And he is the driver. Yes. The driver car owner. We're glad you could join us on this very warm and humid Sunday afternoon from Darlington, South Carolina, where we're presenting live the 41st annual Hines Southern 500. 
the racetrack, it is still Jeff Bodine leading Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, and Kyle Petty with Lake Speed positioned in there, but a lap down. And look at this group of cars. It's well, Terry Labonte and Dale Jarrett and Bill Elliott. Yeah, you can see them going into turn three. So they ran up on Mark Stahl going into that turn, and it was really some tight race. So jockeying around. Here, Here it is. Yeah. Brent Bodine going on the inside of Mark Stahl, and there Dale Jarrett runs up there. He decides that's not a smart thing to do. Gets uh, caught in behind Stahl, then drifts up behind Labonte, and Bill Elliott slows down as well. And they all get by. Boy, a lot of braking going on there. <laughs> I'm telling you, brakes are a very important factor at Darlington. We haven't talked about brakes a lot, but they use a tremendous amount of brakes here going in the first and third corner. Bumper cam on Dick Trickle's car looking back on Brett Bodine. Look at this. Maybe Alfield has slowed on the front stretch. Bill Parsons has crashed here on the straightaway. The car up against the outside wall. He keeps it rolling. And the yellow is out. Davey Alfield was slow as well down the front yeah, straightaway. He sure was. Now he's back up to speed. Now whether it happened right in front of him or if he and Phil got together or whatever the situation, Phil's going on around now. We see the tires rubbing the fender, smoke coming off Phil's car. The Diamond Ridge Pontiac. Everybody drop into the apron of the racetrack as they come on to pit road. Jeff Bodine and Earnhardt and Irvin and Penny and Marla and just about everybody else. Let's go to John Kernan. Tim Brewer and the crew go to work on the right side as we anticipating a four tire change left side lugs coming off. They are also making a chassis adjustment on the right rear. Dale Earnhardt on the bottom as the race to see who gets out of the fifth person underway now to the left side on Earnhardt also left side coming off on the Bodine car going on quickly Earnhardt Bodine who will win the race with it Earnhardt is off the uh, Jackson Bodine by virtue of his pit position is down and away and he is Earnhardt out and also Ernie Irvin is right behind Bill Elliott going out, man, I tell you, it gets narrow when you get out of going out of pit road, doesn't it? Does it ever get narrow? Elliott falling in behind Morgan Shepard. And look at the back pits now as it becomes busy. Terry Labonte and Greg Sachs are back there along with Lake Speed. Of course, they couldn't come into the pits until after those had already gone in the front. I don't know whether it looks more like a swarm of bees or a ballet. I like a swarm of bees. And, <laughs> and the amazing thing is all these people, all they see is their race car. They don't see anything else but the front car, the rear car, the gas, the jet, whatever they're doing, that's all they see. Still fueling Greg Sachs' Tide Machine number 17 as he's pitted on the back stretch. And the field... I will see Morgan Shepard. He's a lap down on the inside trying to get that lap back. Jeff Bodine leads them down. You know, I think another factor in all this pit stuff is the fact that Jeff Bodine is pitted right down toward turn number one. And as we told you earlier, Earnhardt is right in the middle of pit road. The green comes out. Earnhardt looks to the inside of Bodine as they go through the second corner. Can't make the pass. Ernie Irvin hanging in there in third. So they, once again, adjusted Dale Earnhardt's car. Probably have, but we'll see if he's able to make it stick this time on the bottom of the race so he can get through three and four any better. 25 cars on the lead lap. All right, qualifying speed was 158.448 for Dale Earnhardt. What's their top speed down the straightaway? Probably 175 miles an hour. Yep, that was going to be my guess without a radar gun to put on. I, I think about 175. Look at here, Alan Kowicki. Well, that's Morgan Shepard he was going by, but Ricky Rudd tried to go by as well, but couldn't quite do it. Kowicki running in fourth place, Ricky Rudd running fifth, and the lap car of Morgan Shepard between them, and the lap car of Hutch Crickland, car number 12, right behind Ricky Rudd. So Alan Kowicki has fought his way back. There goes Ernie on the inside of Dale Earnhardt. Looking for second place. They come out of the second corner side by side. But look at Earnhardt go up that back stretch and into turn three. He had the momentum coming off the turn. He just stepped on the accelerator, got the spot, and stayed out in front of Earnhardt. Jeff Bodine continues to lead. You can see he's got a few car length lead on Earnhardt and Ernie Irvin. Here is 
Irvin once again looking to the inside. Ernie. Excuse me, Benny. I think you started to say the same thing that I was about to say. He maybe has learned some lessons since he was here in March and uh, had some problems back then, but he's backing off, taking a little bit easier now, but I believe he's got him this time. Hey, they run in that corner side oh. by side, Ned. Earnhardt did not back off and give wow. Ernie the line. Yeah, no, man. So, Ernie, now you remember this back in the spring, don't you, Ernie? Don't you remember this <laughs> scenario? Yeah, and here Alan comes Kowicki. Look at this. Alan Kowicki makes it a three-car battle for position. He thinks better of it and falls back in line. But Ernie Irvin and Dale Earnhardt continue to go side by side. Now Alan Kowicki moves up and battles alongside Dale. Well, Earnhardt Kowicki has really fought his way back. Because folks remember he spun what? The fourth or fifth lap spun and went to the rear of the pack. He brought out our first caution of the day. Now, here comes Earnhardt. Ricky Rudd moves up and joins the fray. The Whitney passed to Earnhardt going in turn three, and Earnhardt passed him back in the middle of the corner. That's a classic Earnhardt move, isn't it, Bob? I tell you. See how low Kowicki is staying? Earnhardt going high. Ricky Rudd went high through turns one and two. Yes, it depends on how your car is set up. Ernie Irvin moves away from Earnhardt and the others. And meanwhile, Jeff O'Donnell is our leader. He is really driven away to about a half a half a straightaway. The 42 car of Kyle Petty lost a few positions on that most recent pit stop, but he is catching up again. He's right behind Lake Speed, and again, Lake is not on the same lap as the leaders. Now, Alan Kowicki and Dale Earnhardt go at it again. Wicky's got to carry it in again. Earnhardt's going to go back under him again. Now watch. Wicky, now what guy's going to be able to move? Oh, Look at Rudd. Wow. Oh, and they bumped. How many times have we seen them bump? Oh, they bumped again. Man. All the way through the corner, they swap sheet up. <laughs> and that's helping Kyle Petty as they were racing up there. Of course, he still has a couple of lap cars between him and them, but he was able to catch up as they were racing back there side by side. Now Lake Speed moves over and lets Kyle Petty go. Boy, let's take a look at that again. We know that Earnhardt's going to try to go underneath Kowicki, but look, Ricky Rudd right on the white line that separates the apron and the bank of the racetrack, and now they're rubbing sheet metal. And they're once again they rub. And you know, remember last week when Dale Earnhardt made slight contact with Ricky Rudd and it knocked the front end out of alignment and, and really cost uh, Dale perhaps the race. Well, Earnhardt's car is not handling, so let's see how high he's going. Hutt Strickland even about to get by. Jerry, what's going on down there? Remember, Ned, we talked to Phillips a little bit ago. He talked about the car was pushing really bad out of turn four and loose over in turn two. And decided to try to fix the push in turn four. When they came in and changed four tires, they made an adjustment on the car. And what they've done is made the car so loose all the way around the racetrack, Earnhardt can't drive it. He can't even get in the throttle. When he went back out to the green flag, he ran a lap of 33, a 32.48. Now he's running almost 33 and a half seconds. So he's a second slower than he was. That's why he's getting caught by a lot of cars in the past year. The car's just so loose, he can't drive it. Yeah, that trick one is a lap car, number 12, and he was right up alongside Dale there for a moment. Yeah, and it won't get better, fellas. It'll get worse as those tires heat up more. From inside Kyle Petty's car, that is Hutt Strickland, and he wants to get around Hutt Strickland so he can pick up perhaps another position and battle alongside of Dale Earnhardt. Well, Hutt was really been being given the passing flag as he came by the start finish line this time. Now he moves oh, on. Earnhardt's in the wall! Earnhardt is in the wall! He bumped the wall twice at least in the second corner. He did make some hard contact on the wall, and you see all these cars trying to dodge her and trying to get by him. And once again, Kyle Petty was right behind a problem on the racetrack and drove, drove through it. Well, he's uh, living a lucky charm today. I guess. Earnhardt. I don't know how much damage there is, but there has to be some damage to the toe end. You know, if slight contact with Ricky Rudd knocked the toe end out of the line, he should have ruined it that time. I'm telling you, he should be behind the wall as hard as he went into it. Well, he didn't go quite as high in that turn that time. He purposely didn't do that. He backed off enough so that it wouldn't drift up too high. Let's watch him through three and four here and see how it reacts there. Rick Mass making an unscheduled pit stop in the Napa Valley. 
Look. Pontiac. And how about this? Ernie Irvin has closed in on the leader, Jeff Bodine. We got Ford against Chevy here in the Hind Southern 500. Ernie Irvin in the Kodak. Chevy Lumina moves to the inside of Jeff Bodine's Budweiser Ford and tries to take the lead. Ernie has not led this race, but this may be his opportunity. He goes into the lead, coming into the third turn. Now let's see if he can hold it as he goes through the third and fourth oh, turn. No. Oh, they touch! No, I knew that was coming. I'm going to have a heart attack. What a You better. <laughs> I tell you, fellas, we see that so often going into that turn three. The, uh, the four car on the inside, he went in fast. The car is going to drift up because of the angle that he has going into that turn. Jeff Bodine had a good angle going into the turn, so he just drove right under. And we'll take a look at the Earnhardt incident. Well, running there by himself, and it just drifts her up high against the wall. Here comes Mark Martin down on the inside of him. He had already made the contact yeah, with me. Yeah, we, we were a little bit past it. That I night. saw it from the in-car camera from Kyle Petty, and um, here it is. Now, they're going down the straightaway here. Watch uh, the black car second ahead of Kyle. That's Strickland in the red car. Boom. 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 Gets the car extremely sideways going in the corner, and the, the fence saved it. If the fence hadn't been there, he'd spun out. Now, look at what happened to Ernie Irvin as he took the lead briefly from Jeff Bodine, but Jeff came right back. And look at the contact between those two cars. Remember last fall when Ernie tried to get inside Jeff Bodine and spun? So Ernie took the lead, but he didn't get credit for nope. it. That's you right. see this right? The two or three car lengths of Jeff Bodine, I bet you Ernie Irvin's heart has just now started beating. That's <laughs> scared to death. And I'm not so sure about what yours is. Ooh, it was pretty exciting. <laughs> So things settle down here just a little bit. Oh, another our... spin over turn Whoa. two. Just as I say that, we do have a car sliding through second corner. Like Sterling Marlin? Yes, yes, it is. No contact. It doesn't look like no yellow flag. Noel went... Ford is looking to see if Sterling can go away. And he gets it going again. He was running ninth when he lost control there in the second corner and did the spin down to the inside. But Marlin is rolling again. Well, there's first and second again, Jeff Bodine and Ernie Irvin. Well, that's why they call it the track too tough to tame. Here's the, here's the uh, tail end of the Sterling Marlin spin down in two. Yeah, there were several cars running in there together. Shepard got through there, Morgan Shepard and Blake Speed, and Sterling just spins down to the inside, and everything okay. Okay, well, we'll take a breather and allow you to catch your breath and... Uh, Settle things down here in the exciting High Southern 500 from Carlington, South Carolina. Beating Ernie Irvin. And later this afternoon, he clocked tonight, the Yankees and the Red Sox. Fellas, we need to, to establish that Phil Parsons is still in the race. He, he went into the pits after we saw that damage that was done to his... Pontiac, but he, they repaired it, so he is in the race. So it did not put him out. In fact, he's running 29 right now in the car number 29. He's one left off the pace. Third, fourth, and fifth. Third place, that yellow, red, and or that blue, red, and white car of Alan Kowicki. Then Ricky Rudd in car number five, and the 42 car that carries our Jason Binoculars in car camera driven by Kyle Petty. By the way, did you tell the folks that uh, Ricky Rudd that yellow and white car is going to be the Tide machine next year? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the uh, tobacco companies, Kodiak and Levi Garrett, are going to combine their sponsorship on one car, and the Tide sponsorship that uh, has been on the Daryl Waltrip car for the past few years will go to the number five machine. There he is. Okay. There's first, second, third, fourth right there. First and second on the left. Jeff Bodine and Ernie Urban, and then coming up in third and fourth, Alan Kowicki and Ricky Rudd. Fifth place is the 42 card by Kyle Petty, the Pete Pontiac. And there's Harry Gant, back in six, worked his way back after missing his pits, a disastrous pit stop a couple of pits ago. Three-time winner here at Darlington, Harry Gant, who's running in sixth position. Now the lap car there is Rick Mast, and then comes Seventh place car, Mark Martin. Who fought his way back from an early spin. Current.
Strickland, Winston Cup points leader. There's Hutch Strickland, the lap down. And here comes Dale Earnhardt. Remember, he brushed the wall just about 15 laps ago. And Ernie Irvin is trying on the inside of Bodine coming off the second corner. Now, he has, he's done this before now, folks. Yeah. He'll get him going into turn three, but will he slide up and Bodine go back under it? He might have slowed down enough that time. No, here, here comes Jeff. Jeff. Live right up there, and here comes Bodine again. <laughs> Nothing to do about it. And it was easier that time. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Ernie says, I hate him when he does that. <laughs> Urban still had to let a lap, but boy, he's come close. We'll show you the top 30 at the end of 145 laps in our Winston Cup race. Ernie staying right there with him, positioning his nose on the inside of Bodine once again. We're going to try this again now. Yep. He says, I'm going to slow down a little bit more going in this time. I'm not going to slide up. But the fact is that the angle that he's going in at is not good. He can't help but slide up. And there he goes again. Here comes Bodine right back one more time. Just like clockwork. Happens every lap. And meanwhile, Jeff is saying, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Okay, Ernie, it's your, it's your turn to pass him off two again. Get under him there. Come on. Well, meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt is going to be challenged by Bill Elliott here in just a moment. We'll continue yeah. to watch this battle for the lead. They just bumped each other coming off the second corner. And those are the cars that are out of the race. Wallace, Bailey, Duffy, H.B. Bailey who crashed. Rusty Wallace dropped down the room with a blown engine. Schrader was involved in the crash. So was Jimmy Means and Chad Little. Richard Petty apparently blew an engine and Mark Stahl out of the race. Now, how about this? It's the Lake Speed who passed uh, Dale Earnhardt. And now here comes Bill Elliott. And Great he point. is there on the same line. So Bill moves into eighth position. Certainly not a good sign, though, when uh, lap traffic, as Lake Speed is, was able to pass Dale Earnhardt. Here's Urban and Bodine still <laughs> going at it. Meanwhile, nothing's changed back at the front. Well, but there has been a change in the top five. Kyle Petty has moved into fourth now around Ricky Rudd. Ernie Irvin. Oh, 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 yeah. Boy, that could have been disastrous right there. And Irvin now passes at a different point in the racetrack. Maybe yeah. he's going to be able to hold the lead here. Yeah, that, uh, I don't know. No, he's uh, not up there. Again. Forget it. Well, wait, now, a minute, wait a minute. Now, hold on. No. Hold on, guys. No. But look coming into the picture, fellas. Kyle Petty and Alan Kowicki. Kowicki, while they were doing all that jockeying around, Kowicki Ooh. has come up there. Now he's going to make a pass per second. Kowicki is strong. Look at how he came on to Ernie Irvin, and he runs side by side with Ernie. Just like gets a little loose. But he gets the car sideways, and here Ernie goes, and here comes Kyle Petty. I teach you to sprint. Bob takes it. <laughs> Maybe we just better sit here and watch and let the people watch. <laughs> side cam on Kyle's car. Now Kyle moves alongside of uh, Alan yeah. Kowicki and picks up the spot. Yeah, Kyle's car is handling well, especially in turns three and four. And that's where he made that pass. You know, if it was by five tires, we would say that they need to cool the tires, need to back off, just run a couple laps to cool the tires. But I don't know how the regulars react to slowing down and not using them and sliding so much. And then turn three. I believe that's Jack Pennington in 47, sliding to the apron of the racetrack. And now insurance automobile is fun. It's well off the racing service. It's down on the bottom side of the track. I'm not sure it's going to cause a caution. No evidence yet as the leaders come by. And Irvin, again, was within a half a car length of taking lead. He passes Jeff Bodine, and, and now the, the yellow comes, comes out. out. Yeah, they were hoping these guys, even though he is now he gets the... Kanawha insurance car going, Jack Pennington. But these fellas up front were hoping the caution would come out because those tires are getting very worn and they were slipping and sliding all over the racetrack. They want to come in and get some new rubber on. Ernie Irvin, I believe, is going to be the leader of this lap. Yeah, this he's racing back to the flag, so yeah. he's going to get those five bonus points. Finally, he's had to lead a number of times, but this will be the first time that he had it across the start finish line, I believe. There it is. Let's replay the incident up in turn three. There's Pennington on the left side of your screen. Car goes. just goes high. Back in goes around. Davey Allison right behind him. There's Rob Moroso. Had Phil to hit Parsons. the brakes. Phil Parsons. Oh, just you're about right. Spun out. Yeah, Phil Parsons, not Rob Moroso. 
Kyle Petty reported that he had a flat tire. So if that is the case, this is going to be a big break for him. Sure will. That car wasn't, wasn't running like it had a flat tire. He was right in the thick of that battle for the front. Pace car picks up the field, and in just a moment, the pits will be opened, and we'll see a lot of activity in front of us here. Look at the guy standing out on pit road, signaling their drivers where to stop. You see, Jeff Bodine gets a tough break this time because he has to follow the four, count, four car down pit road. He can't go flying down. And you see the four car is going to stop. Hold Jeff behind him, hold him behind him, hold him. Now he gets out of the way. Let's go to John Kernan in Urban's pit. Well, I'm in. Uh, Jeff Bodine's pit. Jeff comes to a stop. Jeff on the bottom, turning on the top right side tires, coming off of the Bodine car. Right side's going on. It will be a four-tire change. Left side lugs already off. Urban still. Kyle Petty. And also, you can see where the bump where Ernie is. And Kyle has now pitted. And let's look at Jerry Punch. Well, indeed, a break for Kyle Petty. He's got four tires. This is a caution flag came out. Kyle radio to Jerry Nelson and said he thinks he has a tire going down. So a big break for Kyle Petty. And the pit crew will be able to get him in and pit, changing all four tires under the yellow flag. Meanwhile, the activity just beginning in the back pitch. You can see the disadvantage that those pitting on the back stretch have. They're just now starting to make their pit stops, and we'll see. Look at all the cars coming out of the front pits. Now, they, these cars will have to start behind all of those automobiles, and there's no way in the world they can get in front. Up and Terry Levine at the front car there on the back stretch. Of the, we're seeing the Cole Oakmobile. He has been running good but and passed a lot of race cars, but he's been playing catch-up all day. Seventh caution period of the afternoon is over Darlington Raceway in the Hind Southern 500. We're glad you could join us. We'll be back right after this. Turn into Dr. Jerry Punch back at Darlington Raceway for resumption of the Hind Southern 500. The green flag is out once again. On lap 158, and the race resumes. This most recent caution from his spin down at turn number four by Jack Penny. It was a big break for Kyle Petty. Jerry, what was the story on that? Well, I'm standing with Richard Tillis. Let's ask him. Richard, how much damage did the car have? Well, it knocked the toe in off on the front, so on a long caution, we're going to try to fix it. They did not have time to fix the toe in on the, the Goodrich car here during that caution flag. And, of course, a big break for Kyle Petty. Remember, he had a tire going down. It's being passed for Wiki. And Gary Nelson grabbed and said, hey, Gary, we got a tire going down. Can you believe it? And about the time the yellow flag comes out to a good break for the peak team. It was kind of a, can you believe it? we got a tire going down. And then the yellow came out and said, can you believe it? <laughs> no, I can never believe it. Those breaks never happened to me. <laughs> when I needed to caution flag really bad, I caused it. <laughs> <laughs> Irvin, once again, making a bid on Jeff Bodine, and Mark Martin is right behind this duo. Running with Morgan Shepard, who is not on the lead lap, so Mark Martin is in third. Mark trying to get by Morgan Shepard. He's on the inside. I would be, not be surprised if Morgan does that before he does. Yep. And there's Kyle Petty in the blue and pink number 42, and he's fourth. You see a little damage to the... Uh, lower part of the left, left bumper on Mark Martin's car. I don't think that's hurting the car at all, but... A lot of traffic behind Martin and Petty. Harry Gant, Lake Speed. You saw Doyle Ford violently waving the move over flag to tell those guys, Lake Speed, Morgan Shepard, those guys, if those guys are outrunning you, please be considerate. And that's the key. If they're outrunning you. <laughs> they can't, obviously, you should stay in front of there you can see that yeah. damage on right on the Valvoline side on the uh, parking car. That happened to the camera early in the race. Ernie Irvin leads Jeff Bodine and Mark Martin. Kowicki, Ricky Rudd, Brett Bodine, and Bill Elliott. Well, uh, Alan Kowicki lost on that round of pit stops, fellas, because he was running third before the caution, and he's back now running in seventh position.
Make this car a little bit tight. Take a little while for it to start coming in. On the long little green flag run, he gets to going good. But the car looks like it might be pushing just a little bit. And Phil A, remember, he led the race earlier, but made a pit stop on a caution play because he felt like he had a five-race or something. He's trying to struggle his way back in that course forward to the front. Number nine is running nine. Yep, running nine. He's gradually getting back up there. Applying the pressure to Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Buick. He is not in attendance here today because Kenny Bernstein, of course, is involved in the biggest race of his year, the U.S. Nationals in Indianapolis. Nick Trickle and Dale Earnhardt and the bumper cam on Trickle's car. Okay, where is Earnhardt? Well, oh, there he is. It's on the outside. As Bill Elliott moves around, Brett Bodine just in front of those two cars. Earnhardt moves around Trickle on the outside. Oh, that's a real gutsy move on Earnhardt's part to do that. 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th have changed positions here. Now there is Bill, who is now 8th, and then Brett Bodine, who is 9th, then Earnhardt and Trickle. side of your screen leading Jeff Bodine and Mark Martin and Kyle Petty. There's a picture from inside Kyle Petty's Jason Binoculars today sponsoring the end car. Now we're going to go to Dick Trickle's bumper cam and look back on the battle. Rob Moroso is back there. Gary Cope. And Dale Jarrett. And Jarrett just got around coach the last lap as they came through turns three and four. 12, 13, and 14. There's the 21 of Dale Jarrett. That 10 car, Jerry Cope, remember, has a chance to pick up $100,000. And he earned Art and Rusty Wallace were the three guys that had a shot. Maybe we haven't explained that. Ooh, oh! oh. Cope goes high, clips the wall. Boom. Mike, Mike, why did you do that, Jerry Cope? Put the camera on him and look what happened. That certainly doesn't help his chances of winning $100,000. Maybe we haven't explained that as much as we should have. Of course, the Winston Million is, uh, is to any driver who can win three of the four crown jewel races from R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, and because we have had three different winners in those three races, uh, they are the ones that can pick up $100,000 by winning two. Those, two. those races are the Daytona 500, the Winston 500 at Talladega, the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte, and of course this race. And here's how Derry Cope visited the first turn concrete. He went in when the corner and just simply could not turn the car because if he had up, it would have spun out. He just had to go up and let it brush the wall. You've heard of the Darlington Stripe pumps? Yep. That's it. He got it. <laughs> and on this next lap, he got, ooh, did he get sideways? Wow, did he Man. ever get sideways? But he's still out there going. Bobby Hillen in the Snickers Buick right behind him as they move around Charlie Glock's back driving the DK Ulrich entry. He doesn't look like he slowed down that much. No. Didn't uh, appear to affect him all that much, but the car once again drifts high in the third and fourth turns, and there is the leader. It is Ernie Irvin from Modesto, California, the most recent Winston Cup winner leading behind Southern 500. We'll be back right after this. Ernie Irvin continues to lead behind Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Leading by a few car lengths, Jeff Bodine in number 11. Now we saw the number 10 car of Derek Cope having some problems out there. He bumped the wall down in the first turn and he got sideways in corner number two. Let's get out of Jerry, who's with Buddy Parrott. 
Oh, lots of gain or lose today, buddy. Your driver, Derek Cope, slowing down a little bit. What's the problem? Well, uh, you know, we, we touched the wall up in one and two. He had followed Earnhardt a while ago. We got out of the pit right behind Earnhardt, and uh, Earnhardt went up there and touched the wall. So evidently, he wanted to try it out, too, see if it made the car run a little better. Now, it's really hot down here in Darlington today, and the track's slick. The tires are working great. It's a real consistent race tire, but uh, it's just the weather's so hot today, and the Pure Later car is doing a good job. Derek's real cool in the car. We're giving him plenty of drinks and water and Gatorade and all that, and uh, hopefully we'll come out here with a good finish. Derek Cope, who scraped the wall just a little bit ago, and had to back off a little bit to be concerned about possibly rubbing a tire. He'll keep an eye on it, but he's got $100,000 up, up for grabs. He can hang on and possibly win this thing. And that's another team that made an announcement here at Darlington this weekend concerning 1991. They're back with Purelator, in fact, for the next three years. So we're very, very glad to see that. Now, uh, lap ago, the number 42 car of uh, Kyle Petty got around Mark Martin. Here's how it happened on the main straightaway. Well, Mark was trying to move down to the inside. It looked like it just give him room to go. He was waving to Kyle, saying, yeah. go high and uh, go right around. Mark Martin does not want to race with a living soul today. This is Darlington. We're not at Daytona or Charlotte or anything. We're in Darlington. And they've, they've read all those reports that uh, you don't race the cars, you race the racetrack. And, and that's, that's what, what he's doing. Yep. He's racing the racetrack. He wants to be here at the end. Now, if that was five laps to go, he would have raced it. But at this point in time, it doesn't make any sense for the Winston Cup point leader. And he'll probably do the same thing when Harry Gant pulls up on his back bumper. He'll just say, hey, Harry, go ahead. So Mark Martin goes back to fourth now. There's Harry Gant in the fifth position. And, you know, I asked you guys your opinion earlier about whether or not Mark Martin is racing at this point in the season for the race win or if he was thinking more about the Winston Cup. Well, we asked Mark about that. Winning each individual race, whatever event we're at, that's the only one to us there is in the world, you know. Put everything for that. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> well, see, now, look, he just he said, go ahead, Harry, have a nice day. But he's in the perfect position. He's following good race cars. Harry Gant, the 42, Kyle Petty. And there's no one behind pressure. He can just ride around and get all those valuable points. Hey, it pays a million dollars. Yep. What you do for a million? I don't even, don't even answer that, Bob. Let's see. What would I do with a million right. dollars? I'd buy out your contract. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in trouble with it. Here's Kowicki and uh, Bill Elliott. They're racing for the sixth spot. Both these Fords are running well. Kowicki I'm very impressed with. Now, here comes Earnhardt and Rudd right behind them. A couple of Chevys. And both those Chevrolets going extremely high. The Fords run a little bit lower on the racetrack down in one and two. We've had six separate leaders in this race, but we have had an incredible number of position changes here with just a little less than 200 laps to go already. It's sort of ironic that we got those uh, two Fords, these two that we're seeing here, uh, Alan Kowicki and Bill Elliott running together, and then right behind them are the two Chevrolets, Bernhardt and Rudd. I think it's just ironic that they're together. I don't think it's planned that way at all. Because you don't hook up with a partner here in draft. Now, drafting might come into play a little bit down the straightaways as Ernie Irvin moves around to car number 41. We understand that Chad Little is in that car now. Larry Pearson is out of that car, and Chad Little relief driving for Larry Pearson. And another relief driver on the track right now is J.D. McDuffie, who has gotten in the number two car, started by Charlie Glossback. J.D. was uh, bumped from the uh, starting field, couldn't make this show in his number 70, but now he is in the race as a relief driver for Charlie Glossback. Coming up on the halfway mark next time around. Now Jeff Bodine got a tough break when he caught the two car driven by J.D. McDuffie going in that corner. And look what kind of gap it gave Ernie Irvin. Here we go. There it is. The cross flag displayed by Doyle Ford. We're at the halfway point. Now there is no right guard halfway challenge money paid for this race. So uh, Ernie does not pick up $10,000, but nevertheless will get the credit for leading at the halfway point of the Hind Southern 500. A Labor Day weekend tradition here in South Carolina, and we're glad you could join us. We'll take a break and be right back. 
We're back at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina for the Heinz Southern 500, and we are watching our leader, Ernie Irvin, up ahead from the Heinz in-car camera, carried by Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy is not on the lead left, having spun earlier in the event and hitting the wall. And now you can see how he is signaling Jeff Bodine to pass on the outside. That's a very courteous thing to do. Tell the, the faster driver what your intentions are so that you they know what to do inside outside. There's Ernie. Now we're going to give you a field snapshot. Get set and watch for your favorite driver because we're going to lock down the camera in turn number one and watch the field pass through. We'll also time the lap by the leader, Ernie Irvin. Watch for your favorite driver. There's Bodine and Spencer, Petty, Gant, Martin, Earnhardt, Kowicki, Bill Elliott. No, that wasn't Earnhardt. There's Earnhardt back behind Bill Elliott. There's Trickle, Brett. Dale Derrick right over there, Bumper. Derrick Coates was behind them. There's Bonnie. That was the 41 car driven by Chad Little, I thought. Rick Wilson. Dave Marcus. Butch Miller, here he comes, 33.9, that's 145.062 miles an hour. Is that? And that's you, considerably slower than they qualified, but they always slow down on a slick, hot racetrack. You might have noticed that one of the real good battles on the track, as you saw the field pass through last time, was this Alan Kowicki, Dale Earnhardt, and Bill Elliott struggle. And so we'll focus in on it. Say Arnold's not doing too bad. If, if he's got a tow-in problem, they fix it on the next fix stop. Competition might be in trouble because he passed Elliott. The fans obviously went a little bit hysterical when he did that. Now he's working on Kowicki. Earnhardt and Elliott are the two guys that are leading the balloting for the most popular driver nomination this year. And at the moment, Bill Elliott leads that contest that is decided by the fans. But Dale Earnhardt is running a very close second. Of course, that contest won last year by Daryl Waltrip. Kowicki finally just moves over and says, okay, Dale, since you're so much faster than I am, go ahead. Again, race the racetrack, like Ned said a moment ago. That's the, what the drivers want to do. Not so much the other competitors, but just try to be there at the end of 500 miles. Six, seven, eight, and nine. As they close in on... Seven Pontiac goes down on the inside. Special once again. They still got Red to go by. There goes Ricky. Gordy Shepard. Jimmy Spencer dropping to the inside of the track and letting the faster traffic pass by. Now moving back up into the groove with clear racetrack. The hood is buckled up just a little bit on that car because of his contact with the inside retaining wall in the back stretch. Yes, he had to go in and make some repairs on that car, so he spent a good bit of time during green flag running the pit. Gary Copen, Dale Jarrett, and Michael Walter passing the Heinz car. 193 out of 367 laps completed. Ernie Irvin continues to set the pace at the Heinz Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Jeff Bodine running in second, followed by Kyle Petty, Harry Gant, and Mark Martin. Well, you remember earlier this year, Ernie Irvin had just taken over. He had competed at Atlanta in this car, but came here to Darlington with high hopes, and things did not turn out to tour greatly, and it showed very graphically last week at Bristol when he uh, battled with Rusty Wallace for the last 80-some laps of that race and uh, held him off and really showed some maturity. Well, I told Ernie Irvin after the race here in April, I said, Ernie, I knew you were going to crash. I told some people two or three days before him you're going to crash because you can't go to Darlington pumped up like you were. And I think he appreciated that, and he has the maturity. That boy shown the last 15 races has been incredible. Yeah, he, he realized that he has a good race car, and he 
that was only what the second or third race that he had been in that car when he was here at Darlington and it was a fast race car and boy he wanted to prove to the world what he could do but uh, the place jumped up and got him and he has certainly matured a lot since then. 10th and 11th and so 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th here. We're looking back from Dick Prickle's bumper can to Brett Bodine, and following him is Dale Jarrett and Michael Walter. Brett Bodine has tried to make a pass a couple of times, and you can see the yellow car, Michael Walter, peek out there for just a moment. Here they are. This has come up on the car number 41. It's now being driven by Chad Little. There you see Michael Walter going very high in the turn, but I'm staying down a little lower. And following Michael Walter is the number 21 Citgo for the Wood Brothers entry, driven by Dale Jarrett, who was victorious here at Darlington yesterday in the Bush Grand National Race. Dale has been running good today, and they've had some uh, not too good a pit stop. Well, they're pitting on the front stretch, but uh, one time they had an air wrench problem and really got him behind, so he played catch up. And uh, the last pit stop was a little better, but still not as good as some of the others Ooh. that he had passed. And so he's been playing catch-up quite a bit. You're right, Bob. I said, ooh, because that was almost a bad deal. Yeah, it was. Brett Bodine slowed dramatically so he could get by the 41 car driven by Chad Little. And almost was run in the back by Michael Walter and Dale Jarrett. 11th, 12th, and 13th there. Bodine, Waltrip, and Jarrett. We showed the average speed, or you told us the average speed just a moment ago, 145 miles per hour. They qualified 155 miles, 158 miles per hour. You can, so you can see how much the drop-off in speed has been after they run a few laps at this racetrack. But it is hot here this afternoon. It has been all weekend, but it's really hot and humid here this afternoon. Well, we've run about 50, almost 50 laps since they made their last pit stop. And the tires are getting heated up quite a bit again. Here's an interesting statistic, and I was thinking about this a few laps ago, and our Kenny Martin has beat me to the punch and answered it before I asked him. No driver in the Winston Cup modern era, that is since 1972, has followed up his first career win with a win the next race out. How about that? That would be something. That really, that's very interesting. But he's on his way to doing it at the moment. They sure can't catch him. Nope. So they got to make some more pit stops. They were just a little bit over halfway. Now, I did that not in the modern era, Bob. But when did I you? won my first one at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, on a Saturday night in 1959 on a half a mile dirt track, we went to Charlotte, North Carolina, the old half a mile track there that's no longer in existence, and won the next day. Won I'll two be, in the same weekend. I'll be darned. That's Great. when I wrote the bad check for the car. <laughs> <laughs> we won't Had talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out to Jerry Punch, who has uh, talking about some relief drivers here in the hot sun at Darlington. Indeed, Bob, the life of the Winston Cup relief driver. I'm with Jimmy Hensley, who has been asked to stand by for relief for Kyle Petty. Now, Jimmy finished fifth in the Bush Series race yesterday and is currently second in the point standings there. Jimmy, I know you must have mixed emotions. You'd like to be in the race car, but you'd like to see Kyle see you because he's running so well. Well, that's true, Jerry. Uh, I was happy, you know, they asked me to stand by, but right now he looks like he's doing real good. Uh, he's been up to top five, you know, since about the four his lap, so looks like he's feeling pretty good right now. The car's running good. Many of the fans may remember the last time you climbed in a Winston Cup car in a relief effort was last year up at Martinsville, Virginia. You ran one lap for Childers and put his car on the pole, so uh, pretty good, pretty good uh, batting average in relief. Well, right now, uh, that, was a, that was a big day for me, and uh, that kind of got my career on a roll right now. And, uh, you know, stuff like this has helped too, so we're just thankful to be here. One of the talented Bush Grand National drivers standing by, getting ready, possibly if needed for relief, for Kyle Petty. Hey, John Curtis, this is exactly how hot is it here? Jerry, it is so hot, you can see how hot I am. Well, I've grabbed one of the, uh, what they use is a tire temperature thermometer, and it's not a very active reading, or accurate reading, I should say, but it's uh, been reading somewhere around 120. Now, I touched the asphalt with it. It jumped all the way up to 135. Now, how do they keep cool here in the pits? Well, this is a bag of ice that Tim Brewer has down here. If I can get his shot of this, a bag of ice. He has been wearing it on his head to keep a cool head, I guess you might say, which is very important here in the pits. 
Ten drivers began this race wearing cool suits to try to keep them uh, cool, but uh, most of the field choosing not to go with the cool suit. Well, Jerry Punch was talking to Jimmy Enza down there. Rob Moroso in the Crown Oldsmobile made contact with the wall up in turn one and two, as we've seen several drivers do, went in the corner, brushed the wall, kept going, kind of like Jerry Cope did. Doesn't seem to be a lot of damage. And then it, it, there becomes another problem going into turn one here. As this race goes on, you start looking dead into that sun. A lot of glare down there. Sometimes you can't see really where you are. That's right. When you go in the corner net, exactly, you can't. Right there, Ernie Irving cannot see the race. He can now, but later on, he will not be able to see the racetrack. He kind of got to guess where it is. And every time we have a Winston Cup race, we guess what the hat of the week of. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, no. <laughs> you make a good one. <laughs> We understand the leader may be coming in for a he pit is. stop. Yep. Jerry Punch will call this pit stop by Ernie Irvin, who becomes among the first to make what we appear to be a scheduled stop. Jerry? This would be a scheduled pit stop, but actually it's about seven laps early is what they really wanted to run. But Ernie Irvin brings the Kodak Chevrolet down pit road. Tony Glover holding the signboard, a very brave guy with those brakes as hot as they are. He cleans away the grill here in the Chevrolet Lumina. Crew now changing right side tires. Remember, the green flags up, the speed. Very important here. Efficiency. Right side tires now going on the car. The left side lug nuts have been pulled away. They whip that air hose around the car. Trying to jack the car. Left front tire off. Left rear tire off. They got the car full of fuel. Lug nuts back in place. They will rip that jack. And he is headed down turn road. And Bodine coming out of turn four. Great pit stop now for the early urban crew. Bodine will pass by and put Ernie a lap down for the moment. However, we will be seeing the pit stops occur from everybody, and uh, they'll be in an equal situation unless we have a pit, a uh, yellow flag. They'll learn our crew standing on pit road like he might be going to make a pit stop pretty soon. As we watch our leader, Jeff Bodine, going in turn three, and we know that he don't need any fuel. I think no. he can run 500 miles. In <laughs> but I'll bet you fellas it won't take uh, Ernie Irvin three laps until he'll pass, come up and pass Jeff Bodine and get back in the lead lap with those four new tires on. Here's Earnhardt apparently going another lap before he comes into the pit. Here, hey, yep. three laps. He didn't take that? one lap. <laughs> that is unreal. A half lap. Wow. Look, he just drives around Jeff on that. See, if we were clock Ernie now, he'd probably be running about 32 seconds flat versus 34 seconds flat with those worn tires. And look how far he pulls away. That's how much of a difference tires make. And we'll see most of them put on four tires, too. Because that left side tires here, especially on front and steer cars, and most of them are running front and steer cars, make a big difference. They say take a pretty good beating. And uh, so they'll put on four tires. Childress crew continues to wait, but Mark Martin comes in for the Jack Roush team to go to work on it. Stop. He comes in rather slowly. We see how he's angled out. That's a smart move on a driver's part, to angle out when you stop so that if someone parks in front of you, you can drive out easy. Obviously, Gary Cope was in front of him. He's not there, but it's always something you should do. There goes Ernie Irvin past, and there goes Jeff Bodine past Mark Martin as he completes the work on the Folgers board and gets rolling again in 21 and a half seconds. Very again in the pit as Mark Martin goes out of the pit. Of course, Mark Martin is now lap down to Jeff Bodine. Harry Gant was running in fourth spot, relinquishing it to come in for some fresh tires and fuel. Shirley Martin, a little further up pit road, in for service on his Pinoco Oldsmobile. Everyone changing four tires. All the cars we've seen on pit road so far. Yep, I think they will. All the front runners in particular, then, they'll take on four tires because it. it wouldn't take long. You'd abuse those right side tires if you only put those on just in a few laps, and, and uh, it wouldn't do you much good. Earnhardt and Bodine staying out there. Dale Driss high up on the racetrack again. Alan Kowicki comes in for his pit stop. As there is the leader, Jeff Bodine, number 11. Now, Rick Wilson in the car number 75, the Dinnerbell hot dog car, had gone a lap down to Ernie Urban. Now he's back in the lead lap, but about to go a lap down to Jeff Bodine. As Earnhardt now coming into the pits in the Goodrich Chevrolet, and Jerry Punch is there. The winningest active driver, Darlington Raceway, Dale Earnhardt, with six career victories here, including this race a year ago, brings the Goodrich Chevrolet to a halt. He'll work on the right side of the car. Earnhardt grabbing both cups of Gatorade. Ernie Irvin down in turn three now. 
and Earnhardt's crew is saying right side cars will come around on the left side. Jimmy Urban has already made his pit stop. Jeff Bodine is due to pit. Left side cars now on the Earnhardt Goodwin Chevrolet. He is down the way. Great pit stop for the Goodwin crew. And now we wait for Jeff Bodine's pit stop. Here comes Kyle Petty in as we watch the work on that from the crew cam. He looked up to the left side of the car. Richard Boxer. Now look the other way. When he's on the second can of gas. Yep. Got it full of fuel. Now they continue to work on the left side of the car. Jeff Bodine comes in, and John Kernan is there. Well, Jeff could have run just a few more laps without running out of fuel, but he's seen how quickly a, a car with two, four new tires runs. So, Jeff, whoa, he misses his pit. He slides by. Now they're going to go to work. Hopefully they got enough air hose to get over there, but it looks like they don't. Well, yes, they do. Now the left Urban is coming out of turn four. Left side lugs off, right side's already on. And they're getting the jack under. Here comes Ernie Urban to the start finish line. He passes by, gets his lap back. And Jeff Bodine still in the pits. A costly move is the overshot. They finally get down and away. 22.6, still a pretty good pit stop. But that cost him a few seconds by overshooting his pit. Yeah, and it cost him a bunch of seconds out on the pit, uh, racetrack, John, as a result of Ernie Urban running so fast for on those new tires. Here's Bill Elliott coming into the pits. Elliott picked up the lead for just a moment, but now he's in, and Jerry's there. Elliott was the leader, a three-time winner. Here it goes, and they will indeed get four tires here on the Melling Coors board for Bill Elliott. And they get the nice cold drink. They're cleaning the windshield. Mike Mee really scrubbing the windshield. Remember, Ned mentioned visibility, a serious problem here late in the afternoon. The windshield has to be extremely clean. Left side tires going on the car. Love got down, going back to the left side tires. They have fueled the car, ready to pull the jet. Coors pull it, even away. Second pit stop for Bill Elliott. The 21 car of Dale Jarrett picks up the lead with pit stops being made. But he's coming into the pits right now. The pit go forward. The Wood Brothers there ready to change four tires, we assume, on his car. Yep, they are going to change four tires. We see the fellows over there working on the left front, taking the lugs off. Eddie Wood on the right front. Lynn Wood on the right rear. And Terry Hall, the son-in-law of Lynn Wood doing the jack duty, so that's a family operation there. Here comes Rick Wilson in, just ahead of Dale, and here comes Rick Mass out of the pits. The blue number 22, the 26 car of Brett Bodine picked up the lead, but now here he comes off the fourth corner, and John Kernan will call the pit stop for the Quaker State Buick team. Brett Bodine pulls the Quaker State view again to the pits. It will be a four-tire change, but he did get just a little bit crooked, turning out more into the pit lane to go around to the right side. Left side lugs coming off, right side going on. Cleaning the windshield. I don't know if you can see, but a lot of oil and debris on the windshield makes it very hard to see. Very important to get the windshield clean. Two cans, a uniform towel, 76 racing of gasoline going in. The right, left side tires going off, lugs going down. Jack is down in his way. 21.9 seconds of pretty good pit stop. Well, I should say it is. That's among the better ones that we saw on this series of stops. And both of the Bodines came into the pits a little bit hot. There's the leader, Ernie Irvin, there in the uh, number four car, running alongside of uh, Dick Trick. Now, with all the pit stops made, it is the number four of Bernie Irvin in the lead again. Now, we'll take a look at Jeff Bodine overshooting his pit. Yeah, he went by a full car length farther than they expected him to. And another angle will show you how far he went past the assigned position. It really messes up a pit stop. Really messes up a pit stop because those fellows know where they're supposed to be. Here's Brad Bodine coming in. Locks up the rear tires and almost spins the car out on pit road. But you know he positioned it perfectly to get out. He sure did. <laughs> did about a quarter of a spin and had the nose pointed exactly in the direction that he wanted it pointed to get out of the pit. That pit that uh, Jeff Bodine slid into was the pit that Rusty Wallace was using. Of course, Wallace has been out of the race since the early going, so didn't bother anybody. Ernie Irvin continues to lead the high Southern 500. We're live from Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina. We'll be right back. Back at Darlington and, oh, we have a crash up in turn number one. Dick Trickle got loose and bumped the wall and then uh, we had a couple of cars 
run into each other behind him, and Ernie Irvin just escaped. Boy, there was Bobby Hill enough against the outside retaining wall. That was close for Irvin. If we have it in replay, you will see how close it was for Ernie. Meanwhile, here he comes around the fourth corner, taking the caution flag the Dick, eighth of the afternoon. Dick Trickle trying to get a lap back, but he couldn't do it. He had just passed Ernie Irvin, but then he got loose and lost it. And we'll see it right here as it happens. We see Trickle going behind the two car. J.D. McDuffie gets the car out of shape, never can save it. He goes up, hits the outside retaining wall. The 17 runs in the back of Ernie, and Hillen runs in the back of the 17 car, and both those cars make some heavy contact. There's Phil Parsons, I think, driving under those cars. I don't think it would have taken much to get that 17 car over on its side. Watch as he gets uh, T-boned by the Bobby Hillen, number eight. We see Dick Trippel going on the outside and never can get the car saved. Oh, wow, you're right, Bob. And Brett Bodine. He had to really climb on the brakes. He Ernie Irvin is going to need tires, and here he comes. Jerry Punch is there. Indeed, he will need tires, and Tony Glover and the Chris of the Kodak crew is going to work on the car, but a break for Irvin. The rear of the car, the quarter panel, some of the rear fenders actually pushed up a little bit, some damage on the rear of the car. A very busy place down here in Pimpton, and they will change right side tires. Kyle Petty getting service right behind Ernie Irvin. Mark Martin right in front of him. But they change them left side tires. Jack Bean pushes deep the Kodak Chevrolet. Left front tire going on. Remember the left rear fender was pushed in a little bit. He's pulling it back away. Irvin is far down and away down pit road. And he comes out just ahead of Harry Gant, who almost ran into Brett Bodine. And Jeff Bodine, who made a pit stop just, oh, oh what, five laps ago on the green flag. Gas only. He goes back on the racetrack, and he now is the leader of the race. Huh? Here is uh, there's Bobby Hillen's car up against the wall in the second corner. Here's a replay from Dick Trickle's bumper cam. Dick just bounced off the wall, but Bobby Hillen and Greg Sachs made contact with each other back of him, and Bobby Hillen climbs out of the car, apparently okay. 36 laps here at Darlington. The yellow remains out here at Darlington, and the reason is because uh, the NASCAR scoring officials are going over the... Uh, scoring procedure here and making sure that everybody is lined up properly for the restart. Michael Waltrip is shown as the leader of the race in car number 30 and then Bill Elliott and Dale Jarrett at the tail end of the lead lap. More on this from Jerry. There's a discussion in the Bill Elliott pit about what happened just a minute ago during the pit stops. Apparently Michael Waltrip pitted for fuel only. Now Bill Elliott did not pit at all. He stayed on the racetrack Bill saw the 30 car come back on the racetrack, and it's a blend rule that involved. It's really sort of a call by NASCAR. They are checking the scoring tapes now to determine if indeed Michael Waltrip beat Bill back on the racetrack, and would Michael be the leader, or would Bill Elliott be the leader by virtue of not fitting at all? That's why we had a delay right now, and we're still under caution. Okay, they're getting it sorted out, and we'll be uh, yellow here for just a few more minutes. They have told Bill Elliott to go in front of Michael Waltrip, and you see the exchange being made right there. So. Now, the signal is being given for one more lap to go. Brett Bodine and the 26 are both on the tail end of the lead lap. Is that correct, Ned? Well, Dale Jarrett, see, he has not made a pit stop, so he can stay up on the outside groove uh, because he is in the lead lap. Brett Bodine did make a pit stop, so he has to come up on the inside as the lap cars do. So, uh, since he is up there, he is in front of Bill Elliott, so, yeah, he's... Uh, so, both those yeah, cars start yeah. side by side yeah. are in the tail end of the lead yeah. lap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's somewhat of a break for Brett Bodine that Jerry is up there because it gives him one more car up in front of Bill Elliott. So. Elliott didn't pit, and Michael Waltrip and Jeff Bodine pitted only for fuel during this caution period. We talk about track position. Can you imagine Bill Elliott did not pit trying to get that track position? Here we go. Oh, Jared, with a slow start. That car is not going. Boy, everybody missed him, but man. Yeah. Well, what a tough break when he thought he was going to get back in the lead lap. Now he thought he could get the going. Ooh. That was scary, but everybody avoided him. And down the back stretch, Brett Bodine has his lap back. And the leader of the race is Bill Elliott in number nine. Here's a replay of the restart. And you can see that Jarrett, who was up front on the outside line, just did not go when he hit the accelerator. 
Everybody pulled out on the inside. He stayed up close to the outside wall. And here's trouble on the front straightaway. Mark Martin is involved. Butch Miller Martin. is against the wall. Martin, I don't think, has hit anything. I think he just spun around the second time today that the point leader has spun around. He made a 360, and I don't think he touched anything, but Butch Miller did. And let me tell you, folks, I'm, I'm telling you, you usually kid about this thing, and the guy closes his eyes on it. He drove that car every inch of the way. And look at Brett Bodine trying his best to get a lap back. And yeah, Doyle he's trying Ford. to stay in the lead lap, and sure enough, he does. Doyle Ford signaling uh, that the crash is here on the main straightaway, but so to slow down, Butch Miller in the banquet planters peanuts car here is uh, the contact with the wall that uh, butch had and then mark martin sliding through and he's steering this car right now folks i watched him as he was going down through there i was looking eyeball to eyeball and he was steering hmm. so it has been a tough day for mark martin but he has uh, survived a couple of very close calls down dale jared is in jerry what's the problem down there on the restart, Dale Jarrett said the car would not come out of second gear as Mark Martin breaks the Folgers for down pit road. The Sit Crow crew now trying to get the car out of second gear to put it into high gear. A tough break for Dale Jarrett. Meanwhile, Mark Martin headed down pit road for service. Let's check in with John Kernan. The Folgers crew goes to work on the right side. It will be a four-tire change. I asked Jack Rush if he hit anything. He just smiled, shook his head, said, no, we're okay. We just got to bring it in and put on new tires. So once again, a very fortunate happening. Well, fortunate in that he didn't hit anything. Now the rights are on. Left sides are coming off. They're taking their time just to make sure that everything is okay and uh, that nothing is rubbing against the tire or anything like that. Now Martin is down and away. But Johnny won't hurt him as much this time as he did earlier when he spun out because there are only 12 cars on the lead lap. So that puts him in much better position. He doesn't have many cars to come up through. And Kyle... Well, a minute ago, we reported that Dale had a problem with the car being stuck in second gear, and Dale, it turned out to be even more than that. Yeah, it sure did. Uh, it happened the first time going out on the green flag pit stop, and that's what really got us to lap down, and then we were in front there and going to try to make the lap up, and I think we could. The Sitco Ford was running pretty good, but uh, it did the same thing. When I went to go in third gear, the shifter was messed up, and it put it back in first gear, and it turned into many RPMs. I guess it messed up the engine. Well, it's a downer today, but a big win for you yesterday. Yeah, I think it comes back around. I'd rather had to win today, but winning yesterday did give us a shot at that $25,000 uh, bonus that Charlotte Motor Speedway is going to put up. So uh, that is uh, upside in, in winning at Darlington. But, you know, we can always look. We were running well, and we've got something to come back with next year. Indeed you do. We're getting ready to go green back here at Darlington, Bob. And the crowd is on its feet as it looks towards turn number four and sees the field coming down for the green flag. And Bill Elliott is back in front of the Southern 500 with Michael Waltrip second, then Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin, and Harry Gant. Bill Elliott did not make a pit stop, so his tires a little bit worn. Ernie Irvin did make a pit stop, has those fresh tires. There's Jeff Rodin, he as well, gas only, no tires. Let's see if Ernie's able to go by him. Not yet. He's closing in on Bodine, though. Here comes Ernie on the inside of Jeff. Two abreast in that first corner. And Ernie will try to take the spot away from Jeff Bodine, and he does. And Harry Gant follows him. Bodine might have had to back off a little bit coming off of that turn as the car slipped up close to the wall. There's Look. Earnhardt right on his back bumper. Earnhardt isn't out of this thing. He's still looking for that Unical bonus money of $30,400 that he'll pick up if he wins because he was the pole sitter of this event. Still right on the rear bumper of Jeff Bodine. Well, right underneath him now. And Kyle Petty in the pit Pontiac trying to move him to the inside of Jeff Bodine. And he makes the pass. Boy, that 11 car is going to the rear, isn't it? Well, I wonder if that car might be pushing just a little bit here now in the early going and uh, if it'll come to him a little bit or the track will come to him a little later. Here's Kyle Petty moving on the inside of Earnhardt. He'll get him going into turn one. He'll try to get him, Bob. He will. Yeah, I believe he will. Ooh. Right. <laughs> Bob was right for a change. For one. But, oh, oh, Kyle Petty. Now, Earnhardt trying that. You know who, you know who yeah. that reminded me of? Kyle did him. 
you a few years ago, coming off the second corner on the first lap. The train well, stop. You, you tell everything you know. <laughs> Folks, what he's talking about, I didn't make it to the first corner with a pair of hit the wall. I just tell him, Bob. <laughs> now Kyle's going to try it again. You were my hero anyway, White Benny. <laughs> Still are. But one thing he had done, he'd won the pole for that. That's race. right. <laughs> i got to give him credit for that. Thanks, man. <laughs> There's Dick Trickle and Earnhardt trying his best to use Trickle as a pick. And goes in the corner right, ooh, just flew in the corner on the outside of Trickle. I wonder if Jeff Bodine and Tim Brewer Jr. and those guys are wishing they'd change tires now instead of just putting gas in it. Yeah, I wonder. They've lost several positions since the green wave. They're back to seventh, and here is Harry Gant and Michael Walter battling for third. Harry Gant will come out with the position. And right up ahead there is Ernie Irvin. Now there are two yellow cars running it together. Irvin is in front of Rick Wilson. Wilson, of course, a lap down. And Ernie Irvin now has his sights set on the leader of the race, Bill Elliott, who has stretched out the advantage a little bit. There you can see the interval between second and first position, Bill Elliott, who has won three times here at Darlington, is looking for victory number four and his third Southern 500 win. Back at Darlington and another caution period, and Kyle Petty's luck has run out. He's escaped several times this afternoon, but this one he was clearly involved in, along with Michael Waldrop. Danny was a victim of circumstances. Looked like Michael and... Uh... Earnhardt. Did, did they make contact or just Earnhardt was trying to get under? Well, let's see. We got a replay of it. Happened up in the third turn between three and four. Okay, here's Michael Waltrip in the yellow car on the left. Earnhardt coming in on him pretty quick going into the turn. Michael slips a little bit high. They made contact right there, and what Michael gets into the wall, and Kyle Petty coming hard runs into Michael Walter. Had nowhere to go, but nowhere right to in go. the back of Michael Walter. Yep. Ernie Irvin is in for a pit stop, and uh, John Kernan is there. Right side tires have already been changed on the Kodak Chevrolet. Left side's on, and he is down and away very quickly. So we got a report to Kyle Petty as well as I can see. He just pulled into the pits in the front end, demolished his radiator, is busted. So Gary Nelson and the crew are going to go to work on that as the hood goes up, and also there's a fire in the back of the engine compartment. They will put that out first before they can do, uh, obviously, any work to spraying the water on that and trying to get the fire put out, but he's got quite a lot of damage on the front end of that race car. Kyle Petty had run in the top 10 all day and uh, had missed several incidents, but not that one. And there is Michael Walter. Now, we're going to show you the entire lap uh, that set up this whole thing in real time to show you what happened. There we see a little bit of contact with Michael. He goes up, hits the wall. Kyle runs into him. Now watch behind. Now watch as the cars come in. Michael Walter, remember, is going slow. Here comes Kawicki, Davy Allison, Sterling Marlin. Look at, watch Mark Martin, right? <laughs> oh! Bodine was all the way, Jeff Bodine, all the way down on the flat. He came back up into the traffic, blended in as they were racing down to the start-finish line. Mm. Boy, Michael Waltrip sits on the backstretch pits. Another close call for Mark. Let's see if we can raise him. Mark, this is Bob Jenkins. You read me? Just took advantage of it, too. Uh, a couple of the passes I made were, were you know. Now, he's apparently uh, talking with uh, his crew right now. We won't eavesdrop on that. But when we get an opportunity, we'll uh, maybe ask him how that will look to him. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, he has, he has been in some close calls today. The Winston Cup point leader, the Folgers Coffee Ford. All right. They continue to work on Kyle Petty's car. He may be able to get back out there after an accident with Michael Walter here in the Southern 500. Here we go again. Green flag is out. This is lap 259. Yellow car down the inside. The Jennifer Oldsmobile driven by Rick Wilson. And he is in 12th position, a lap down. There's Kowicki going by on the outside of the Rick Ford. Now in the third. Davey Allison trying to follow him by Rick Wilson. 
Now, Allison is a lap down, being shown in 13th position. Rick Wilson is being shown as 12th. Here comes Davey on the inside of Rick, and they're side by side. And for the 12th position. 12th position. Sterling Marlin's trying to get by. The 75 car looked like they both moved at the same time. They zigged when they should have sagged. You know, why in the world did Bill Elliott, he did not pit again. He stayed out in, the, in front again, did not change time. Yeah, I guess he likes that set of tires. They seem to be working for him. He's pulling away from Earnhardt a little bit. Now here's uh, Rick Wilson going high on the racetrack, allowing Sterling Marlin and Mark Martin to pass by. And here comes Derek Cope and Jeff Bodine. Now Jeff Bodine did come in that time and get some new tires. And here comes Ernie Irvin. One hundred and six laps to go. Here's Ernie on the inside of Derek Cope. Has that position again. And Ernie did stop and change tires that time. So, and all the cars in front of him did not stop. As you can tell that Ernie's being very careful and plotting his strategy very carefully. Here's 94 and 6, Marlin and, and Martin for fourth position. Now remember, Marlin was involved in a one-car spin earlier himself. No caution came out that time, but he stayed in the lead lap, and now he's fought his way back up into the top five. But it's about to be passed for fourth. Mark Martin goes inside of Sterling Marlin into turn number one. Marlin holds him off for the moment. But Mark Martin... And look at the four car on the inside of the left. We just saw it at the bottom of their screen, almost on the apron. And Mark Martin has position this time. Looks like he's going to take his spot away. Now let's see if he slides up and Marlin drives back under him. Ooh! No. Jeff Martin. going on, almost ran in the back of it. Yeah, Marlin had to do a little uh, defensive driving there. He was on offense and... Plan to drive back under Martin, but Bodine uh, sort of fouled that effort up. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh right here. And here there Jeff is. goes underneath the 94 car. There's literally side by side, and Ernie wants to follow Jeff, but Sterling's going to drive in. Now Ernie has to go under him. If he's able to do that, he is with those two tires. Bodine is now fifth, and Ernie Irvin goes to sixth. And we saw Harry Gant coming in the picture. He moves into uh, seventh race spot. Eight. There's Ricky Rudd and Derry Cope battling for position. And Harry Gant leading this trio. Cope is one of the drivers on the lead lap. So is the yellow car number five of Ricky Rudd. Remember who's leading? Sure, Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott, the guy that's, that's, that hasn't stopped the last two cautions. And he hasn't won this year. Can you believe that? No, I mean, that's hard to believe. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with Mike Beam. What is their strategy, Jerry? Well, it's rather interesting. I guess they haven't been up front that much this year, with the exception of Michigan, and they like seeing the car up front. But I believe it's more to it than that. Mike, what's the strategy as you clock Bill going by that time? Pretty good lap for Bill, 33-15 on Mike's watch. What's the strategy? You haven't stopped. Now, if we can go to about lap 300, you know, we can go, you know, we're going to make one stop, and everybody else wants to stop also. And that's a good set of tires right there. You know, we got behind because we had to stop at one time and change four uh, because of that set of tires vibrate. We're just kind of waiting and seeing, you know, we can go one more stop because, you know, they run like 20 laps under out of 40 right there. So we just want to see what happens and, you know, hope we make the right decision. It gambles a certain extent, but... You know, I think we'll be okay. Bill said the car's fine. It's just the track is starting to turn, you know, start from behind, you know. But we'll just see what happens. Well, Bob Dickens, get out your calculator. The last time Bill Elliott's stop was on lap 221. 
Now, if they run, say, 72 or 73 laps, that means they're going to have to stop around lap 294. That'll give them exactly 73 laps to the conclusion. That's pretty good figure here by Mike Bean. Let's see, 221. And you'll never figure it out, Bob, unless you get your calculator. <laughs> well, but that, that's going to be cutting each of the, the gas stops pretty close. He, he's going to be running uh, up there pretty close to a full tank of fuel each time. Or using up full tank of fuel like this. Yeah. Let's watch carefully the number 11 car for some smoke that has been reported possibly coming from that car. I don't know. Don't see it there in the third and fourth turns. Watch it do one and two, maybe. Hard to tell. Yeah. All right, let's check our Western Auto Race recap as we move into the final 100 laps of the Heinz Southern 500. Bill Elliott leading has led 68 of the 265 laps. We've had 10 cautions for a total of 53 laps. Currently 11 cars on the lead lap, and the number of cautions has held down the average speed to 116 and a half miles an hour. Dale Earnhardt, Dave Marcus, Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott, Butch Miller, Ernie Irvin, and Dale Jarrett have all led this race at one time or another. Now those that are out of the race, Rusty Wallace was the very first to drop out with engine problems, very early. Also Bailey, Duffy, Mean, Schrader, Little, Petty, Stall, Sack, Speed, Chad Little is back in as a relief driver now, and also exiting the show, Bobby Hill and Dale Jarrett and Butch Miller. Now, the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year standings, Robin Pemberton on the Mark Martin car continues to lead with Tim Brewer on the Jeff Bodine machine second, then Danny Glad with uh, Alan Kowicki, Mike Beam with Elliott, and Andy Petrie of Harry Gant rounding out the top five. That's the battle for the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year award. Here's Mark Martin and the car number 11 of Jeff Bodine and the car number 4 of Ernie Irvin. Ernie's been trying hard to get around to Jeff Bodine. Hasn't been able to make the pass. This might be his best chance now, but can't quite do it that time. I imagine Tony Glover's telling him, look, there's still a lot of laps to go, almost 100 laps to go. Be patient. Be patient. That leader just isn't that far away. Mark Martin running fourth, Bodine currently in fifth, and Ernie Irvin trying to take fifth away. He might have it this time. Yep, he does for the moment. Let's see what happens in the third turn. Ernie Irvin, is he going to be able to hang on to fifth? We'll show you the interval between those two and the leader. There he is, Bill Elliott, so it isn't that much racetrack that separates us. Jack Pennington again spinning on the backstretch. Will there be a caution? Nothing at the moment. Pennington has the car straightened around. He did make some uh, contact with the inside retaining wall, it appears, but he is moving again, and there will be no caution. So Bill Elliott looking for win number one in the 1990 season is leading Dale Earnhardt here in the track too tough to tame, Darlington. Austin Bill from Dawsonville, who in 1985 won the Winston Million at this race, is the leader of this Southern 500. There's second place Dale Earnhardt in number three, and third place Alan Kowicki in car number seven. He was up challenging Earnhardt just a lap or so ago, but has now dropped back just a little bit. Then behind Kowicki is Mark Martin, the current points leader, and Ernie Urban, all of these cars on the lead lap and battling for position. And then comes Jeff Bodine in the number 11 Budweiser Ford. He is running in sixth position. Then seventh is Ricky Rudd coming into the picture there in the Levi Garrett Chevrolet. And in eighth place is Harry Gant there in the Soul Bandit, car number 33. And we remind you that Rusty Wallace, who was 270 points behind the leader, Mark Martin, in fourth position in the point standings coming into this race here today, dropped out very early and will finish 40th, but maintain his fourth position in the standings. There's your ninth and tenth place car, Sterling Marlin, and the car number 10 of Derek Cope. The only other car in the lead lap was Brett Bodine. He's behind those two cars. Here's the leader again, Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott has finished a second on three different occasions this year, but hasn't won yet. Battle for second going on here. Boy, the seven car got his right rear end up against the wall. And Ned talked about earlier in the show, 
the visibility problem down in turn one, and it's getting that time of the day when the cars are driving straight into the sun going in turn one. Now, this is coming off turn four. There's Bill Elliott coming off turn four. We're going to take a field snapshot. We'll keep the camera there and watch the time Bill Elliott. We see Kyle Petty back on the racetrack after a lot of work on his automobile because of the crash. We see Terry Labotte coming in there in the car number one. He is currently running in the 13th position, one lap down. Rob Moroso is running 12th. He's one lap down. Morgan Shepard still in the race despite two incidents with Kenny Schrader. There's Jimmy Spencer. Morgan Shepard's only a lap down. He's being shown in 17th place. Waiting for Ernie Irvin to come through, or whether uh, Bill Elliott to come through again. Here he comes. He'll stop the clock. 33.6. It's 146.3. Was 33.9, so he's going a little bit faster now than he was uh, earlier in the event when we timed him. Yeah, that's not bad on those tires as long as he has had them on there to be you know, still running that speed. We have the helicopters airborne once again, and that means we have Kyle Petty's Jason Binoculars in car camera working, and Kyle is back out on the racetrack after that accident. 57 in car camera carried by Jimmy Spencer is also functioning once again. Bob, you remember you saying at the top of the show as we watch uh, Jimmy Spencer coming there that uh, his track position, starting positions here were very important. Yep. Nine of the 11 cars that are on the lead lap started in the top 10. Boy, that really said. Uh, here's the trickles in car camera. That shows that it does pay off to start up front here, darling. Ooh, look at this. Ernie Urban moves up to challenge the seven car of Alan Kowicki. This is for third place. Hasn't been long ago that Urban was back there fighting for the fifth place. With Jeff Lodine. But now he's moving up on the third place car. That car is strong today, and Ernie has done a good job driving. We see some damage to Kowicki's left rear. I don't know how extensive the damage is, whether or not they put the gas in it. I, not, I think the gas neck is okay. We should have pit stops coming up how soon? Well, for Bill Elliott, maybe in the next uh, 10 or so laps. But uh, some of the others can go a good yeah. bit longer. You know, we talked about Ernie Irvin. Oh, Wiki once again is using the uh, Dale Earnhardt line through the first and second corners right up against the uh, up the wall. Well, this is the way we used to have to do it here when they had guardrails. You ran right up next. In fact, you just rubbed the right rear quarter panel against the guardrails, especially through turns three and four. That uh, they're going very, very high down in turn one and two. Now, we ran very low in turns one and two back then. Here's Kowicki once again goes up against the outside retain wall. He was going to the bottom of the racetrack when he went up to challenge, challenge the three car, but uh, now he's moved up higher. Look at Kowicki. He's had a very disappointing season, but yet in the last four races, he has not done bad at all. In fact, uh, a couple of 11th and two top 10 place finishes. Then look at Ernie Irvin. A good run, sixth, and then a couple of bad races and his win last week at Bristol. So Ernie is still in contention for the win. So is Alan Kowicki. But at the moment, it is Bill Elliott who is leading the Trans-South 500 with 289 of 367 laps completed. We'll be back in just a moment. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch welcoming you back to the Hind Southern 500 Winston Cup race here at Darlington Raceway, where Dale Earnhardt now begins to challenge Bill Elliott for the lead. Elliott has slowed in the last few laps. Just in the last two or three laps, Bill Elliott's car seems to have slowed down, and there Ernie goes by Kowicki to take over third spot, but it seems like Bill's car slowed dramatically. I would not be surprised if he doesn't make hit that pit road pretty soon. Yeah, I think his tires have perhaps gone away. Then he's been out there a long time on them. Now, if he came in now, he'd still have 72 laps to go, which is a little less than 100 miles. So he would probably, probably be within be a, the window, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think he'd be within the window. There's the crew, the chorus crew, getting set when Bill decides he wants to come in for a pit stop. They're standing by with the fresh rubber. Well, 
Burnoff's going up against that outside retaining wall too, isn't he? Still, yeah. Getting a good grip off the corner. Pulls right up on the back bumper of the Ford T-Bird. Well, I think, you know, he's going to be out of sequence with some of the cars behind him, and Ernie Irvin in particular, and I think this is going to hurt Bill Elliott uh, because if the race should go green the rest of the way, certainly the others are going to have to make a pit stop, but they're going to have fresher tires than the Elliott. However, now when he comes back out, he's going to be running faster than, than they are, but when you get down to the end of that green flag run, then his tires will be much older, and I think it'll tell the tale on him. Elliott the leader, and Earnhardt is second. Boy, a big payday for Dale Earnhardt if he should win this race. He was a full sitter, would pick up the Unical bonus money and the $100,000 bonus from RJR. Bill Elliott stays out there. Let's go to Jerry for a report. Remember, he pitted on lap 221. Now, by calculation, they could go a maximum of 75 laps. Now, 221 and 75, that's, uh, what, 296? And he's two, it's lap 295 right now, so we expect Bill Elliott to be coming in this time. It's about as far as he can absolutely go on fuel. Elliott's tires have run almost 103 Here miles. Here he comes, Jerry. He's All coming to you. All four tires getting worn down. And Bobby, is, as you said, making an entry down the pit road. The core is forward, leading here at the Southern 500. Mike Lee with the crew getting ready to change four tires. Bringing the car in. Got to be very careful on those worn tires, pumping those brakes. He brings the car to a halt. They clean the front grill. Mike Lee really cleaning that windshield. Make sure visibility is not a problem. Dan Elliott rolling the right front tire away. Ernie Elliott fixes up the tire. Come around the left side of the car. Remember the green flags up. Cannot have a miscue here. Jack beneath the left side. They roll the, the left front tire. Now out of turn four comes Dale Earnhardt. Ernie Irvin and Earnhardt. Elliott is off the jack and away, but he will lose a lap here to the leader Earnhardt as they come down toward turn one. And it's a great battle for the lead as Ernie Irvin goes into turn number one side by side with Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt high on the track, Irvin low on the racetrack, virtually side by side going into the corner. Earnhardt holds him off. The outside groove is the preferred one going into turn one. You have that momentum built coming off of the turn. Ernie couldn't get the traction he needed, so he'll try to make the pass uh, maybe not this time around in turns three and four, but I believe that's where he might try the next time. Ooh! <laughs> Boy, those two cars almost hit on that off that corner. Boy, Ernie is really getting off the fourth corner and getting momentum down the straightaway. This time he passes Dale Earnhardt. Will it stick? Well, he, he was able to get in there and, and get up there in that high groove so he could get the momentum off the turn, so he did make it work that time. Remember when Dale Earnhardt used to sponsor some of Ernie's cars to get yeah. some help so he could race? Yep. Dale might have been a mistake. <laughs> Wonder sent that boy back to California. Chocolate Myers has the helmet on. He's the fuel man on the Dale Earnhardt crew, and he is ready. He is handed out instructions, calling the shots on how this hopefully final pit stop for Dale Earnhardt will go. We understand that next time by, four tires, a full load of fuel for Dale Earnhardt. He'll give up second position, but he'll have enough fuel to carry him the rest of the way to the checkered flag. Now, if the fans are wondering where Bill Elliott is on the racetrack, he's running about three and two-tenths seconds behind as we watch Dale Earnhardt come into the pits. He's running about three and two-tenths seconds behind the leader, Ernie Irvin. Now let's go to the pits as Earnhardt's coming in. Final scheduled stop for Dale Earnhardt. He comes down pit road. Likewise, Alex Wicke and the Zurich Ford will pin further down pit road. But Earnhardt's crew now going to work on the right side of the car. They are looking to take the luck us also off the left side. Right side tires already out. Mitchell Gordon now rolls the tire. Holding the tire. David Smith coming around. Here's Kurt Shelverdine. They're putting left side tires on the Earnhardt car. Let's check it on the Alex Wicke pit. John Curtis. A good pit stop in progress for the Z-Rex 4 team. Right side's already on, left side's going on. They made a chassis adjustment on the left rear and also the damage on the left rear. They pull the sheet metal away from the tire and Kowicki is down and away. And so both Earnhardt and Alan Kowicki complete their final pit stops of the day and both go back out onto the racetrack, trying to build up the speed as quickly as possible. And there's a three car. Watch the nine's going to come into the picture. Let's see who's going to win. Earnhardt's going to win because he's going to go in the corner. He's got the pressure tires, and Bill Elliott is just a few car lengths behind him. Now Bill is two and four tenths seconds behind the leader. Lapping two and four tenths seconds, I should say. I said there a moment ago it was uh, three. 
three seconds behind him, but it's uh, a lap of that much. But he is definitely gaining on the leader, and Earnhardt is not too far behind Ernie Irvin, so he should. In fact, he's going to get his lap back here right now. They come up on Phil Parsons, and Earnhardt just drives between them going into Ooh. turn three and looking at him go into that turn with those new tires and gets back in the lead lap. Like a shot out of a cannon, Dale Earnhardt gets back on the lead lap. A lot more racing action to come your way here in the... Ernie Irvin is in for his pit stop. They've already changed the tires on the right side of the car. Now they go to the left side. Fuel being put in. 19 seconds have clicked off. Here comes Mark Martin in as Ernie Irvin goes back out onto the racetrack. 21.8 seconds stop. John Kernan has Mark stop. The Folgers crew awaits Mark's arrival on pit road as he comes down gingerly down pit road. He swings it into the pit, comes to a nice... Clean stop. The gas can going in. Right side lugs coming off. They'll be flying on this stop, making sure everything is just right. Dale Earnhardt now goes into turn three. Left side lugs off. They will make a chassis adjustment on the left rear. Right side's already on. Jack going under the left side. It goes up. Tires come off. Tires go back on. Earnhardt goes by. Now Martin is finally down and away. Now, Jeff Bodine had taken the lead, but he's coming into the pits as well. And I think Mark Martin had just taken the lead for a lap or two for the first time today. Let's go to the pits again. The Budweiser crew now working on Jeff Bodine. Jim Brewer has changed the right front tire. Pete Wright has the jack. You hear Jeff Bodine revving the engines. Here's Johnson that jumps over the wall to make the chassis adjustment. Now Pete Wright scampers around, slides the jack, beneath the left side of the car. Left front tire off. Left rear tire off. Henry Benfield is filled it up with fuel. Bodine revving. Revving. They're waiting to pull the jack and down and away. 21.2 seconds stop for Jeff Bodine. Boy, those new tires are invaluable because Bill Earnhardt at this point has a full straightaway on the four car of Ernie Irvin simply because he was able to stay on the racetrack and use those new tires while Ernie was out there on old tires. But now Ernie with the newer tires should and look Ricky Rudd all of a sudden has a problem or maybe his tires are just worn out I yeah he, he, he now is in the lead he has yeah. not made a pit stop and I think his tires are worn out he will be coming in for a stop before too long or at least the scoreboard showing him in the lead but there's Mark Martin right behind him and moving around him so that doesn't mean that Mark Martin is taking the lead so I think the scoreboard might be be wrong here right now so We'll have to get that squared away because there are several cars, including Ricky Rudd, that have not made green flag pit stops yet. Brett Bodine was also one of them. He is coming into the pits in the Quaker State Buick. He was one of the cars, 11 cars on the lead lap. Brett was running in 11th place. Quaker State Buick slides to a stop. Larry McReynolds' left team goes to work. Morgan Shepard just slid into the pits and the craft forward. So wiping the windshield on the... 26 car to make sure that visibility is good in these last few laps. Rob Russo goes out of the pit in the Brown Solo Mobile. Good pit stop for Brent Bodine, according to my watch. That was a little under 20 seconds. Those guys have had best pit stops all day. Rudd is leading. Evidently, Mark Martin was getting back in the lead lap so. there a moment ago. I think it was what was happening when he went around. So, so Rudd uh, is being shown as the leader, and Dale Earnhardt being shown in second place, but Rudd is yet to stop. And I said a moment ago that I thought Mark Martin had taken the lead. He was shown on the scoreboard, but I think just as he took the lead, he came into the pit. So I don't think he officially led a lap to get those five bonus wins at that point. He did not. Okay. it down off the banking and heads for his pits. His best finish here in a Southern 500 was third last year, Jerry Punch. Indeed, he would like to improve on that. He brings the lead by Garrett Chevrolet down pit road. This car will change colors this year and carry the tie colors. Crew now working on the car. Tony Price slid into windshield. Dale Earnhardt up in turn four. He will assume the point, trying to get second can of fuel in the car. They change the right side tires now, scampering around the pull side tires on. New Goodyear Eagle going on the car. All the fuel being put in the car. Leading in windshield. Lug nuts are on. He is down with Jack and away. Ricky Rudd completes the work. Here is Alan Kowicki and uh, Bill Elliott. This is the race for second position. And Kowicki 
moves inside in turn three and passes. Here comes Ernie Irvin to also try to take a position away from Bill Elliott. And now, both those cars have newer tires than Bill Elliott. As Ned yep. said, those Bill Elliott stopping earlier than the other cars is going to hurt him down the stretch. While Dale Earnhardt leads, Alan Kowicki, Ernie Irvin, and Bill Elliott are going for second and third. Now, Earnhardt has himself a pretty good lead. He's going into turn three right now. Now, Alan Kowicki just enters turn three. And according to my stopwatch, he's four and a tenth second ahead of Alan Kowicki. We'll show you how far these guys are behind Earnhardt. There's Dale in turn number two. And we'll show you a big A auto parts performance on Dale Earnhardt. And he had the best of those that we clocked this time. 13.6 for the driver and only 21.2 for the crew. A total of 34.8 seconds. So although the pit stops weren't especially fast in the early part of the race, when it gets right down to the nitty gritty, they turn it on. Well, the stop that we've been clocking earlier was on caution flags when he had to follow cars. Now, this was a green flag stop when he didn't have to follow anyone. He could come in and go out at, his, at whatever speed he wanted. So now it's Dale Earnhardt showing the way in the Southern 500 as we're 300. The winningest active driver at Darlington leads here this time. Six wins as Dale Earnhardt recorded here, and he is leading the Southern 500. We're showing you the interval between him and here is second and third. Ernie Irvin once again makes a bid for second as he looks to the inside of Alan Kowicki at the end of the front straightaway into turn one. Kowicki holds on to second spot. There's just not traction down on the inside of the track coming off of two. But Ernie Irvin got pretty good traction that time and is going to be able to move inside of Kowicki and take over second position. Now he slides high. Kowicki trying to come back, but can't quite do it. He'll be able to hold on to it, so Ernie Irvin, last week's winner of Bristol, now is second, and Kowicki is third. That's pretty good. Kowicki, yeah. I think, used his mind a little bit there because the worst thing he can do is race with a four-car right now. If they have any hopes whatsoever of catching Dale Earnhardt, they need to worry about catching him and not racing each other. We'd like to congratulate Danny Glad, who has been chosen the Winston, rather the uh, Western Auto Mechanic of the Race. Danny Glad, a member of the Allen Kowicki team. So he is the Mechanic of the Race here at the Southern 500. There he is. There he is. Ernie Irvin's about four and a half seconds behind Dale Earnhardt right now. There's Earnhardt going down the back straightaway, entering turn three. Brett Bodine and Dick Trickle, both those yeah. cars are lapped down. Yeah, Brett uh, is a lap down now. He was on the lead lap, but after he made his pit stop, he's a lap down in 11th place. I'll tell you, there was one point in this race that I wouldn't give you a nickel for Dale Earnhardt's chances of winning, but uh, he has stayed right in there and is eligible for the $30,400 in Unical money plus the $100,000 from R.J. Reynolds plus the purse that he wins for winning the race. Probably a couple hundred thousand dollars. Man. Nice Not payday. Much you said fast. <laughs> About as much as I won in my career. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> yeah, I remember Fred Lorenzen in 1963 won an incredible $112,000 in the season. Yeah. Yeah. Unheard of. Unheard of. Going over $100,000 in the season. And now Earnhardt can pick up a bonus of $100,000 if he wins two races. For the latest uh, news and race reports and conversation with your favorite driver, all you have to do is dial our 1-900 sports system, 1-900-SPORTS-1. Costs $1.95 for the first minute, a dollar for each additional minute. Kids, please get your permission from the parents before you dial. Good information on there. 1-900-SPORTS-1.
Earnhardt got a little bit of a tough break when he passed Hus Strickland going in turn three. Had to back off the throttle. And that's going to let Ernie gain maybe half a second on him. Well, we are a little bit behind on our commercial breaks, and we want to have all of them out of the way so that when we get to the final laps of this race, we can show you the shootout that all of us here in the booth anticipate. Ernie Irvin has been closing in, and uh, the question is going to be who's going to survive here this afternoon. So we'll take another break and get another one out of the way and be right back to Darlington. It appears as if Dale Earnhardt has experienced another bad break. He has radioed the crew and thinks that he has a tire equalizing. They are standing by on pit road ready for him. He got up into the wall in turn number one last lap, but he stays out there and doesn't come in. The crew's there. They're ready just in case Earnhardt decides he wants to come in. He, he has maintained about the same distance. He was about four and a half seconds ahead of Ernie Irvin, but that situation that Benny mentioned a moment ago that he had to back off passing Hutt Strickland going into turn three cost him about a second. Now he has a similar situation with Rob Moroso, but he just drives around him. And uh, so he's about three and a half seconds now ahead of Ernie Irvin. Less than 40 laps to go for Earnhardt. Chocolate doesn't have the helmet on him. Won't need fuel, of course, but uh, but if he comes in, they'll put fuel in it. But pretty good indication that uh, he won't be coming in. How about Jerry? Well, he did radio in, as you said, Bob, and he thinks he has an equalized tire on the right side, but they've been blocking him the last few laps, and other than the fact that he bounced off the wall that in turn one, his lap speeds have been pretty consistent, so what he told Children was a minute ago, hey, unless I'm slowing down, I'm staying out here. He said, I'd like to get a yellow flag, but I don't want to be the one that causes it, so uh, we'll just stay out here and see what happens. They're going to roll the dice. All right. Really, when he had clear running out there, fellas, he, he is maintaining the advantage that he has over Ernie Irvin, but they're ready for him. The crew, in case he does come in, they won't be surprised, in other words. Yeah. Say what, that's not an envious spot to be in for Dale Earnhardt to think that you have a problem and not be able to do anything about it. Especially when you're leading the race. In fact, he's picking up a little bit right now on Ernie Irvin. Morgan Shepard is in the pit. Morgan being shown, well, he's at least three laps down. He's had a tough day here today, so he's out of the top 18. And here are the cars that are out of competition. Rusty Wallace, first out with a blown engine. The race was over very quickly for Rusty. He's probably back in Charlotte watching us on TV. Hi, Rusty. <laughs> Michael Walter eliminated the crash. Now he has been back out there running a little bit. I don't know if he's gone back in the pits or not, but he was back out there at one time and ran a few laps. That's Kyle Petty. He's out there too, but he's losing a lot of uh, laps. Now Ernie Irvin really got caught up behind Rob Moroso going into turn three that time, so that hurt him some. So Dale Earnhardt, despite the fact that he thought at one point he had a tire going down, stays in the lead of the Southern 500. Dale Earnhardt continues to lead. I had him the last time on my stopwatch at 33.58. Wiggles a little bit as he moves around Davey Allison, who is currently being shown two laps down. Now it'll be three laps down. He's in 16th position, Davey is. Let's take a look at the point standings as they are right now. And here's how they are running in this event. Mark Martin is sixth. Earnhardt is the leader. Bodine is seventh. Rusty Wallace, the big loser today, although he's going to hold on to that fourth position because he was so far ahead of Bill Elliott, who is in fourth position. But Elliott certainly will close in in terms of points on Rusty Wallace. There's the leader, Dale Earnhardt, and now we'll show you how far Ernie Irvin is behind in second position. About three and a half seconds. You'll see him coming into the picture there very there shortly. Is. Kodak film Chevrolet, Lumina, driven by Ernie Irvin is second. Alan Kowicki is third, Bill Elliott is fourth, and Harry Gant fifth. 
field snapshot will allow you to find your favorite drivers here. Here's the 11 and 5 cars. They'll be battling for the seventh position. With Earnhardt leading, Ernie Irvin second, Alan Kowick is third, Bill Elliott fourth, Harry Gant fifth, Mark Martin sixth. The 11 car of Jeff Bodine is seventh, Ricky Rudd there is eighth in the five car. Ninth is Sterling Marlin, and tenth is Derek Cope. That's the 10 cars that are on the lead lap. Now, Derek Cope is not too far from going a lap down. He's just in front of Dale Earnhardt. There's Rick Mast in the Valvoline Napa Auto Parts car being lapped again by Earnhardt. We'll give you a field snapshot and we'll time Earnhardt's lap and give you a chance to find your favorite driver and see how he is in relationship to there is Derry Cope right ahead of Earnhardt. There's Mast and Spencer Irvin. Here comes Kowicki in third. There's Elliott. There again, right behind Bill. He's in fifth place. Will Martin. Martin. Pack of cars running here. Bodine and Rudd. Kyle Petty. Terry Labotti. Larry Larry Pearson, by the way, is, is back in that car. He was relieved for a little while, but Larry Pearson is back behind the wheel. And the lap is 33-7. It's 145-9, so he hasn't lost much speed. He's still running a pretty good clip. This late in the race, the tires uh, collapses head on and suffering with that vibration. So now there are nine cars in the lead lap as Derek Cope goes a lap down. And we're 26 laps away from the checkered flag. And Earnhardt will probably remember every one of those laps. Oh, here's uh, Ricky Rudd and Jeff Bodine. And Rudd will go into seventh going into turn number three. If he goes up the Ooh. hill, watch Jeff Bodine will come under him. Nope. Nope, we're not even doing it. It's a little bit of contact between Rudd and Jeff Bodine there. Let's look at it again. Coming off turn two. And Ricky Rudd is trying to get underneath Jeff Bodine. Whoa, and just runs right in the back of him. Isn't that amazing? Those guys are able to play bumper tag at 150 miles per hour. It really is. Now Rudd beginning to pull away from Jeff Bodine as he move around Morgan Shepard. Shepard just hanging in there trying to make as many laps as he can to get as many points as he can. Shepard and uh, Elliott have been involved in a battle for fifth position in the Winston Cup point standings for the last few weeks. First one will be in fifth and then the other. And Bill is running ahead of Morgan in the race here today. So Elliott will, if the race should finish right now, hold on to that fifth spot. Bob, we mentioned that there are nine cars in the lead lap. Derek Cope just went a lap down. He is still being shown in 10th place. Another car that's just one lap down is Brett Bodine. He is in 11th place, as we see Dale Earnhardt. Uh, two laps down in 12th place is Dick Prickle, Rob Moroso in 13th, Rick Wilson in 14th, and Perry Labonte in 15th. Those from 12th through 15th are two laps down. The 9 and 33 cars, 4th position, held by Bill Elliott, and 5th is Harry Gant. As we watch to see if Gant can take that position away, three laps down in 16th is Davey Allison, Dave Marcus is 17th, Larry Pearson, as you mentioned, is back in the Hedrick car, and he is running 18th, and Phil Parsons running in 19th position after an early spin. Pretty good run by little brother. That's great, i tell you what. He hasn't been racing that much this year, and to stay out there in this, in this heat yeah. today is quite a feat. That's a lot. Okay, we'll leave this battle here for fourth to bring you up to date on what's happening at the front. Dale Earnhardt continues to lead. What's the situation in his pit, Jerry? Well, he still reports that the car is like a bucking Bronco out there. It is vibrating violently in the right front, but he realizes that he's only lost about a half, about a half a second a lap, and he's still ahead of Ernie Irvin. And I'm trying to figure out why they would want to take a chance and maybe not, not bring him in for a pit stop anyway, but one of the crew members who's one of the business managers, Richard Tiller, said, here, let me show you why we're not pitting. It's $100,000 to win from Winston. <laughs> it's $30,400 to win from Unical. 
the Southern 500 pays almost 60000 That's a $190,000 pit stop. That's a pretty heavy-duty pit stop. I believe I'd stay out there and take the chance of uh, winning all that money. Dale Earnhardt apparently is going to do so, and we'll know in less than 20 laps if he wins the Southern 500 or if someone else will. We hope you'll stay with us for the remaining laps here at Darlington. Laps to go in the Southern 500 1990 edition. Dale Earnhardt, who won here last year, is in line to repeat and pull off his seventh win here on this racetrack and his third victory in the Southern 500. The interval between first, Earnhardt, and second, Irvin, 3.6 seconds. It hung right in there from three and a half to three point eight on my stopwatch for the last eight or ten laps. So it depends on how they get through a turn or how they might get through some traffic. There's only one car between them. The Jack Pennington car, Earnhardt lapped him not too long ago. Earnhardt coming up to put a lap on the ninth place car, Sterling Marlow. Too far ahead of him. There you can see Sterling Marlin in the Snooko Edmobile. Then you see Ernie Irving come into the picture again. Let's see if he gained any of that lap. Nope, ball oh, stone. Yep. yep. Two tenths of a second. For those of you just joining us at the 5 o'clock Eastern time hour, it has been a Dale Earnhardt, Bill Elliott, uh, sometimes Jeff Bodine and Ernie Irving race for the most part right now. It is Dale Earnhardt who leads this race. However, he has reported to pit crew that he has a severe vibration in the car and thought a few laps ago about coming in. But the chance of winning the Unical bonus of 30000 plus, and the chance of winning a $100,000 bonus from R.J. Reynolds and the chance of winning his third Southern 500, he lost another tenth of a second, Ernie Irvin did, has kept Dale Earnhardt out there. Now Earnhardt moving around Sterling Marlin on the outside, got awfully close to the wall. Marlin gave him the running room he needed. Well, what a year Dale Earnhardt is having. This would be a big pull it off his seventh victory. Yep. You know, fellas, he came awfully close to winning with something adding up the money there that he was could win by winning this race. And it's about the same amount of money he could have won at Daytona when he yeah. uh, came close to winning down there. Lost another tenth of a second. Yep. It's actually 3.9 now. 3.9. Okay, who was the last driver to win back-to-back -back Southern 500, guys? Beats me. I'm not into that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was I, David Pearson in I 1976 to, say, yeah. to 1977. Well, it goes way back. Been a while. I'm sure that was in a Wood Brothers car, too. I guess I'm trying to block that stuff out. I was one of the guys he beat both those years. <laughs> well, Ernie has lost more time now. He yeah. lost two tenths of a second again. Yep. It's over four seconds now, the interval that Earnhardt has on Ernie Irvin. But Ernie is really in not any danger from the third place car. It was Alan Kowicki because he probably has a bigger lead on third than yeah. Earnhardt has on him. He does, but Kowicki is a good uh, six seconds behind uh, Ernie Irvin. And then Bill Elliott's about two seconds behind him. Uh, behind the third place car. Bill Ford and Harry Gantz about a second behind Bill Elliott, second and a half. Doyle Ford has all ten fingers showing, indicating that there are ten laps to go. Second place car, Ernie Irvin. Remember, he won just last Saturday night at Bristol, and now he's in second position here. traffic there going around Larry Pearson just past Morgan Shepard on the back stretch. But those cars moving over, giving him plenty of racing. Again, after Ernie Irvin in third position is Kowicki. Fourth is Elliott. Fifth is Harry Gant. Sixth is Mark Martin. Seventh is Rudd. Eighth, Jeff Bodine. And ninth, Sterling Marlin. So there are now eight cars on the lead lap. Well, Alan Kowicki had like a that. turnaround the last... Uh, couple of months. The first two or three months of the season, his season was disastrous, but since about June started, Alan Kowicki and that's Eric Ford. That's been one of the top cars. Oh, there's a car smoking right in front of Sterling Marlin, smoking in front of Ernie Irvin, her second place car. 
And then he keeps running. That's a nice place car. He keeps going with that. Marlin. Of course, he got in the wall. No, Ooh, look boy. at that thing. Yeah. Smoke. Yeah. Sterling. I wonder if that's rear entry or smoke. I what that is, but the car's still running. Boy, yeah. that would give you second thoughts about uh, standing on the accelerator. Next car is going black flag. Is yep, black flag of Sterling Marlin. Got to make the racetrack quick. He's got to be putting a little bit of oil or something down there, making the flick for Ernie Irvin. Of course, when you see that smoke in front of you, Benny, you you're already tense, and then you see that smoke out there, and it really tightens you up. Sure does. And that is between first and second, so it's going to be a disadvantage to Ernie Irvin. Earnhardt will come down and complete 361 laps. Six to go. Yeah, he's stretching that lead now. Ernie has had to slow down back there behind that smoke of Ernie Irvin. In fact, he's five and three tenths seconds behind. Bill Elliott, Harry Gant. Elliott, that was a race just a few laps ago, but meanwhile, Elliott's pulled away from Harry Gant. Marlin came into the pit, goes back out, still smoking. Kowicki, there he is. Uh, those cars pretty well scattered out now. None of them in danger of losing their position. Second place at the Pepsi 400 at Daytona in early July. Alan Kowicki runs third here this afternoon. He was sixth just last Saturday night in Bristol. One of our scanners tells us that Ernie Irvin is asked his crew to have oxygen standing by Ooh. when the race is over. So, well, Sterling Marlin pulled out of the racetrack again and was again black flag by NASCAR with four laps to go now. Well, he's doing the wise thing. He's Sterling run on the apron of the race. Yeah, he's really not threat to anyone down there. So. Comes Earnhardt, vibration and all. Yep. Three laps from the end. There's second place, Irvin. You gotta, you gotta say that Ernie Irvin has, and we've said it before, but again we say he has made great strides since he was here in April. He sure has. He'll probably remember that day as long as he lives from the day in April. Of course, he may remember this day because second in the Southern 500. Earnhardt is looking for his seventh win of 1990. Two laps to go. This will be his 46th. Winston Cup victory if he can hold on for another lap and three quarters. He's going to pass me one of these days. You had 50? Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. I think he'll do it. Yeah. yeah. So good. Have we watch Earnhardt go around the corner. Bob Jenkins, happy birthday on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, thank you, Benny. <laughs> How old are you? 52? No, I'm 39 again. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you heard that again, Mark. Didn't you? 13 down here. White flag for Dale Earnhardt. And, and happy birthday to Joshua Goldberg, the son of our producer, who uh, celebrates the birthday on the same day that I do. One year old Joshua will be on Tuesday, and Dale Earnhardt is on his final lap in the Southern 500. He look him to through three and four, looking to become the second win this race for the second consecutive year. He is in turn number four now. Dale Earnhardt brings the car off the banking. Here's the checkered flag, and Dale Earnhardt wins the Southern 500 for 1990. And the Richard Childress, Kirk Shelburne and crew celebrate on pit road as they have chalked up their third Southern 500 victory. Ernie Irvin finishes second. And John Kernan is with Richard Childress. Richard, I tell you what, you guys got snake bit a few times, but you kept working and you came back. Right, this, this team never gives up. And Dale, we had a tired equalized, and he just kept on getting it. It was just a great day, you know. You know, we just want to thank Reynolds for putting up the extra 100000 and uh, want to say hello to all our crew and everybody over in uh, Far East. We're all with you, all the Winston Cup team. So. 
very big payday. And besides the $100,000 bonus, the team also picked up that Unical bonus for winning from the pole. A big day for Dale Earnhardt, and we will be back to talk with him in a moment. But first, let's go to Indianapolis, Indiana, and get an update on the Seniors PGA. We go to Jim Kelly and Bob Murphy. Back here in Darlington, the 1990 edition of the Heinz Southern 500 is over. And Dale Earnhardt has won for the second year in a row. Ernie Urban second, followed by Alan Kowicki. Dale Earnhardt has moved his GM Goodrich Chevrolet into victory lane here at Darlington. And in just a moment, we'll be going down to talk with him. He has to be uh, very, very exhausted after this afternoon of racing. For our Sears Road Handler winner interview, let's go down to victory lane and Dr. Jerry Punch. And appropriately on cue, the Goodrich driver, Dale Earnhardt, climbs out and waves in this crowd as he gets a big hand, big round of applause. And I, and I believe he'll pick up that Winston hat and put it on. Dale Earnhardt, congratulations on an outstanding effort. Yeah, they, Daytona, Daytona one shorter to me, you know. I referred to that last cut tire. Now, yeah, you, you missed the million, but uh, the Unical money, the money from Winston, the money from the from the Southern 500, that's about 190 grand you picked up here. That's good. We pick up any points on Mark? I'm sure you did by winning the race. Uh, also, let me ask you, 40 laps to go, you felt the vibration in the right front. I mean, Childers had to be pacing those last 40 laps. Did you think about making the stop? I was holding my breath. Uh, Park developed the vibration like an equalized tire. And, uh, just uh, didn't... Uh, was worried about it, but it made it all the way. I don't know what it was. Uh, I'll thank the good Lord for a safe race. Though, and it was a good long day. Good hot day. Answering your first question, you're now just 26 points behind Mark Martin, so you're gaining on that championship. That's what I want to gain every race. He's exhausted. He can barely talk, but he's certainly happy here in victory lane. Dale Earnhardt winning his second consecutive Southern 500. A hot day has come to a close. Dale Earnhardt has once again won the Southern 500. Let's take a look at the top ten. Urban second, Alan Kowicki third, then Bill Elliott and Harry Gant. Finishing in the second five, finishing in six through ten, was Mark Martin, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, Derek Cope, and Brett Bodine. And as you heard, it is a 26-point margin now that Mark Martin has over Dale Earnhardt, with everybody else staying in the same position in the top five. Next, Raidway. My thanks to Ned, Benny, John, and Dr. Jerry Punch, and thanks to you for joining us for this Labor Day tradition here at Darlington. For now, this is Bob Jenkins. Be careful this Labor Day weekend. So long, everyone.